Oh my god, we had an argument speaking of pasta. I didn't think there was any argument about that. <laughs> Are you no. kidding me? That was the whole thing. You're like, do you think plain noodles is better than butter noodles? Because my first name starts with T. It's just Trish. Make a wish. It came true. I'm already here. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy new week. It is just Trish, but it's not just Trish. You guys know it's just Trish and Oscar. It's like Barbie and Ken. <laughs> or Alan. Yeah. Or, oh, right. Okay. We have Barbie and Ken and Alan. Alan yeah. That's actually perfect. That's, That's cute. Perfect. Okay. That'll be our Halloween costumes. Yes. We'll have Barbie and Alan. Yeah. yeah. You did say that. You're like, I'm more of an Alan. I feel more Alan coded. Yeah. But Alan the vibe of the film yeah. for sure because he goes with the kens and the barbies yes and he was mm-hmm. an ally to the lady and he like had, could beat someone up if he had to i feel like that's totally. very totally yeah. yeah oh for sure mm-hmm. you could i could see you as alan for sure i love the outfit i wonder if they sell those costumes alan they costumes. should i really like the little white pants yeah. the little polo shirt right? oh wait the white pants remember in like well, when he was in the dance scene when, oh the disco one. Yeah. Oh, that is my favorite the disco love, scene yeah. yes oh i love it i think they should make a costume they made weird barbie costumes so i'm pretty sure they're probably they like an alan an costume alan. yeah they had so many ken ones out there it's time for alan Alan it does suck shine. how many people love Ken. Like everyone is just like Ken is the star of the film, and it's like it is. We, we can't talked about, about Barbie. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm like but the woman, the movie about feminism and women empowerment is like we love the Ken song. <laughs> so you can't escape it. You can't escape the patriarchy. It's, it's so sad. That is so true yeah. because I'm one of those people too. I'm like God, Ken is the vibe. <laughs> no, it's so annoying. No, Ryan, that Ryan Gosling was just too so too good. damn charming. Uh, Barbie's on streaming now or digital now too. Oh my so God. That's, okay, sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're not on the platform. It's not streaming. I either buy it like, oh, like the twenty. Yeah, but is that how you say it? Voodoo. Of, yeah, the VU. VU D U. Yeah, we do buy so. our stuff on Voodoo. We've been watching a lot of Tim Allen movies so we've been buying them for like 3.99 sometimes you gotta yeah expensive though for like movies it from like the 90s up. yeah mm. i was like oh my god these are kind of everything we watch a lot of home improvement now too every night we watch on disney plus it's just a wholesome family show <laughs> i really would love tim allen on this podcast i know he's a little controversial in this political beliefs maybe i don't know i think he might be conservative but that's okay right i don't know as long as it's not like extremist as we'll get into with like the eight passengers but oh well was that political or is that just crazy she's both i think is well, it political she's thing? like I don't know. super is she conservative? conservative yeah yeah because conservatives there's some that are i think it's like anything like the ones at the forefront give it a bad name yeah you know like the ben shapiro's and stuff like that but like or candace owens but i think like i think tim might be like i think he's pretty like mid maybe i don't know i think he's kind of mid because he's talked about like i don't know what happened january 6th something happened january 6th and he's like you don't know <laughs> i know it's something like they stormed the capitol yes okay they stormed the capitol i still don't know like who's the right all i know is the conservatives are in the wrong but tim allen even spoke up against the conservatives okay, that's being good. like that's a good sign yeah he's yeah. like i don't like this it shouldn't have happened yeah. so that was like okay he's not a um, mat level yeah, yeah yeah and he's uh, we haven't seen the santa claus we're saying that for christmas time but we watch every single tim allen movie even the crazy one like joe somebody which was actually like horrible but all the other movies are served and so we've been watching all of them he just seems like such a wholesome dad on home improvement like i just i love him so much do you know anything about him i don't i only seen the santa claus that's like oh, the only thing that's the only one we haven't seen I, maybe i've seen an episode or two of home improvement it's on maybe disney plus which is random but it's like I, featured on disney plus that is really random yeah it was on when i was a kid so it gives me like nostalgia watching this and yeah, very into sweet. it yeah yeah we I, I love he's 70 he looks so good he's just on jay leno's show he looks so good for 70 he's on a jay leno's like pop what is yeah, Jay he has like have? Jay Leno has like a car show. Oh my god, this is like oh, straight man news. Okay, yeah, okay. he has like a show where he talks <laughs> about cars. Very, uh, straight it is a very man news. straight intro. I know, <laughs> <laughs> so straight. Speaking of straight, you look like someone said this is the last episode that you look like the male version of Shrek, like when he's a handsome human. I've heard that a couple times actually. They tell me I look like Fiona, but the yoga version, <laughs> not the Cameron Diaz pretty one. So at least you get the handsome, Shrek. handsome Shrek. So this is very giving Shrek Hello, handsome. Chabla. Let's hear it. I've been practicing, kind of like you. You use about six accents when you do your your traveling, your little videos. So I think I kind of I have a Trish scent as well. It's like a it's a mix of accents. I see you've got a dragon's egg, or is that a goose egg you've got? Oh, I've got a goose egg. <laughs> got it from me daughter. I did when she knocked me on the head. It's okay. She's nothing but a tyke. <laughs> I don't know the accents either. I'm so bad. I know. It's Wait, like, let's but, do, another, do another one. Uh-huh. I love it. I took a sip of ye pink potion, and uh, <laughs> I. <laughs> 
<laughs> it all made me knees like like jelly all wiggly. Jelly all wiggly. Yeah. Well, that's weird. I wanted it to kill you. I did. Should I have been here? It should be just Trish, not just Trish and ye Shrek. <laughs> But the cute version, not the yoga. Can't be mean. It's 2023. We don't boy shame. This is my favorite thing in the world. Like, I think I could do it like a whole podcast. So I, I was just I would have come and I have to find a pink version of it, <laughs> yeah, though. I'm on my pink theme, so I cannot <laughs> let it go. Um, but we could do a whole TikTok. I was like, we got to get one for Moses. I, I got a little fairy costume for Malibu. I want her to be my little to I am like so invested. Like, I need to know the plot. I want to know more like background characters. I can't wait to see where it goes. Oh, I'm, right. It's like I'm tuned in, sat for like Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Like, it's that level. <laughs> I'm shook. Okay, I'm so shook by it. First of all, it's like my favorite thing to watch on TikTok. Like, I love it. And anyone can tell you, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I can't get the pictures probably fast enough for the edit, but I used to go to Medieval Times every single year for my birthday with my dad. Like, I literally, if you go to my dad's house, there's just like Medieval Time pictures. Like, I love that era. I love everything about it. And then on TikTok, I've been just seeing the tavern the ones tavern pop talk. up. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I want to do this. And I've been waiting for so long. I kept telling Moses, I'm like, can you like build me something cool like this? And um, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we were building sets and we're building another set. There's all this stuff. He's like, well, when we're done building the sets, then I'll do a little tavern for you but now that they took off he's like okay i can go upstairs and build this and we have the perfect little nook in my office upstairs it's like a little like kitchenette and it's just like the perfect thing like you can put the table so he's like building me a little tavern right now we just did on the kitchen the first one got four million views and i was like this is very odd but i love that people love it no i don't I've, know the plot either so. i've sent it to so many people and everyone's like very very invested no pressure but oh like God. yeah people are tuned in to trish tavern talk it's I, like my it's literally my favorite thing trish in the world. Tavern talk, i like it yeah okay. it's like it's pretty incredible like i said it's like the accents and then your accent Acting is like award worthy. I have to say, no, really? yes, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. When you're polishing the table uh, with, the, with, the, with not even a cloth, that's some real acting. It I does. made you believe it. I know he was gonna put it on a roller cart. And I'm like, but I can't wipe it down if it's on a roller cart. It's gonna move. I'm like, I need it to be stationary. I'm very I take it very seriously. Uh, Thank you for saying. Good. I love acting. I like my dream is to be like in a medieval movie. Like, but I never looked the part. But now I think I do. Now I don't look as like fake and artificial. I think I could be in it. Especially because back then they had like the busty bosom like big yeah. you know ladies <laughs> yes I, I think you totally could i mean that you also really sell that outfit too they should like was it who we wears the it same from? we have this i think amazon <laughs> oh i thought yours was like doll's kill or something um, <laughs> they don't make my size doll's kill they, okay they do have plus size but they never have the cute plus size costume oh. there's a really cute purple fairy costume on there now because i wanted to be a fairy in one of the you know change it up be an elf <laughs> or something and they don't make it in plus size they make like snow white in plus size but she's in like a dress down to her knees i'm like what is with that so there's very few places that sell plus size and if they do usually it's like sexy lingerie but this was a plus size one it's on amazon put my amazon affiliate link first code we don't have a sponsor <laughs> i make no money off amazon affiliate everyone is saying they make like a hundred thousand dollars i've made twenty dollars like for real and I, I sell stuff i get like three cents every time i sell something it's crazy so if you want the traveler costume in plus size i'll put it as me or like, this tavern man costume yeah, we'll put both. yeah this one's both. good this is a medium so okay good for you okay medium you're like i, I, don't know, know, I was worried this was the only one that would get here overnight and i was like i'm gonna manifest <laughs> It's, to me, it's like, I don't know if you're the same, but like, I will buy clothes and I don't try them on like in the store. I just like think that it'll fit. And it's yes. all the power of like manifestation, I think. If it fit, if you think it'll fit, it will fit. fit. Yeah. That's what, yeah. That's how <laughs> we were with the set too. We were like, we know we built two chairs before we even had a guest. And he's like, and Moses like, if you build it, they will come. And I was like, you're right. And they did. <laughs> we have some banger guests. So we're building a second set for another podcast. And like, it is talked about, but it hasn't been like solidified yet. But we're just building the set. We're like, it's just going to happen. happen. As soon as we build the set, that we're going to make it happen. So I think it's going to work. Uh, there's like a co-host for that one. I mean, we'll have you as a costume. We'll have you for everything. You're full-time just Trish soon, hopefully. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I'm a powerful manifester. I think if it fits, it'll fit. Honestly, you look great. Which one, Which do you like more? Do you like the compliment that you look like human Shrek or Jack Atanoff? I think I kind of like human Shrek more, though. I think because he's more like strapping, I think. Totally. You know? And I'm kind of like into that look, I think. I've never seen Shrek. I did look up human Shrek when people said that. I'm like, oh, I don't know what he looks like. Like, I knew Shrek Ogre, but I didn't know Shrek human. And so he was like, Yeah, I had to like look it up because some like, I don't know. I went like on a like Tinder like a long time ago like on a Tinder date and someone said that and at first it was like <laughs> okay it's over but then when I went home and looked it up I was like okay I kind of see I kind of see the vision I think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no I think it's cute I don't know why everyone looks like a Shrek character I remember like there's there's a character I don't know if it's from Shrek Shane used to get like Rumpelstiltskin or something <laughs> <laughs> oh like he like knew it and 
he would use it as like a thumbnail. Like I don't think it's a bad thing, but I was like, why does everyone compare someone from Shrek? Oh my god! I guess I could see it. Or Lord Farquaad gets compared to his people a lot. There's a guy, oh, there's a guy on TikTok. Moses knows about this one. I'm not really into young guys in general. I like over forty. But there's this guy on TikTok. I love his girlfriend too. Let me just preface. Her name is Kirby. I actually don't even know his name, so that shows that I'm more of a fan of the girlfriend than him. He was in a movie called Tall Girl. Do you know his name? Um, oh, that guy. Do you know yes, him? Yes, 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 yes. I remember him now. I was thinking the the little the short boy that likes tall girl when he said tall girl but oh no, no he's the tall the cool boy guy. yeah <laughs> he's the tall boy and he does have a tall girl in real life i love them i would love them on the podcast um but everyone yeah everyone looks like shrek i guess and people told me i look like fiona shrek when she's shrek when she's an ogre no i see cameron diaz vibes no, i do not look like him that's yeah, like you do Moses saying yeah. i look like no, oh i see it <laughs> but there was also <laughs> there was like this a fake tweet like uh, happened over the weekend where someone said i just seen was um, Cameron Diaz's cousin and I believed it for like oh, the past oh I could see that right yeah. but I could also see you like maybe you I just seen <laughs> Cameron Diaz I do not like that. Cameron Diaz I look like I'm doing this TikTok today I look like um Kimberly Locke that's why oh. everyone says I look like her and I do I have my it's my phone's in the other room because it's charging I, but that blew my mind I yeah. totally see that Kimberly Locke I can't yeah. I, I, and I looked at her and Moses saw me saving the photos like what are you doing because he knew I was doing I probably thought I was like what I, I don't know and I saw a TikTok that's like if, if you saw oh oh I know what I know what sparked this it's like if you saw a person of a different race look like you would you recognize that that's your doppelganger but they were a different race because they say Meryl Streep looks like future have you seen that one? No, I have not seen that one. I think that's the rapper. I think it's Future. And they do look so similar. They're, it's like viral right now on TikTok. Like, it wasn't even in my notes. I was like something. <laughs> so I was going to stitch it. And then when Mo was like, what are you doing? I was like, wait, I don't know. I don't want people to ever take like offense. But I think Kimberly Lock is so pretty. But I don't want people to think like I'm trying to like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. People get offended over everything. Yeah. But I do think she's so pretty. But. On that note, too, there's another one I used to get when I was littler. Um, she's grown, but Tisha Campbell Martin, do you know her? Yeah. Yeah, I used to get her because she was on a show called My Wife and Kids when I was like in middle school or high school, and everyone's like, You look like Tisha Campbell Martin. And she was also on Little Top of Horrors, and I think she's pretty too. So I always think that's interesting, which is another reason we got you 23andMe. Please sponsor us 23andMe. Oh, yeah, we really do have, we have to get to the bottom of I it. I think, I think so. I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I've just been playing my whole life, so I like to channel like anyone with like, you know, cuteness or anything like that. But like today is my Carol G moment, and I am just like, and <laughs> literally, I was like, I kind of I feel like I look like her a little bit, but then I was also like, not at all. I love Carol G. She's like selling out. Last night she sold out 65,000 people in Dallas. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing. She's so great. And in her set, like, I've seen photos of like her sets and stuff. And I love, they're all like girly and fun and pink. Yeah. And, like, so she did a pretty. Barbie song. I was this morning we were listening to, it's a new one I heard. Well, it's not new, but it's new to me. Me ex, Tenya Razon. <laughs> <laughs> my ex has a reason and I was like listening to it I was like this is such a vibe also like dis dispo um, with Miko and then there's another one too I think it's Carol G it's like mom, mammy I don't know it's just a vibe I don't like I don't speak Spanish so it's like hard for me to like but, but I love the music like we listen in the morning and I'm just like yeah so good and then they just have such cute vibes like Cali she has the vibe it's just like I don't know I've always liked Latina girls they're just like glam like do you remember Susha no I don't know is why she we she no, she was a well. I don't know. She might have been something before talk show host. She was like the Latina Oprah, oh. and she would come out and it was like shoo shoo shoo, sha sha sha. <laughs> and she was glam. She always had like these crazy outfits on, and I just love them. Like I just I, I I don't know. Like Selena too. I just like love like the glam of it all. You know? Yeah. I love it so much. Or the quinceanera dresses. I don't know. But anyways, I was I was, I was like, always so mad I couldn't have a quinceanera. Were you ever in one? Were you ever like one no. of the presenters? <laughs> no. Do you think it's because you don't speak Spanish? <laughs> was, like I you know what I mean? That. I don't know. Like I don't want to sound offensive, but you don't know. What I mean like maybe they I don't know is that, I don't know if it's offensive gringo, you yeah, it. yeah. Like, don't let the gringo in the quinceanera uh, yeah, yeah. uh, right do you think maybe, <laughs> maybe. I would love to sing in a quinceanera <laughs> I would like, I'm a pro I would like, I would learn. Actually, I have a Spanish song, so freaky I could perform. I forgot it already. Get un freak. <laughs> Your accent is pretty good, though. I do have Thank to say. Thank you. Yeah. That was so good. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Thank you. I would oh say I would perform at a quinceanera. That would be amazing. Or a bar mitzvah because I also speak Hebrew, too. So I sing in Hebrew, too. Like, what's the one I know? Um, blee and haki ga ga ga. Blee, 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 ga ga ga. Yeshli am hulere ezo mezi ba. Mija, mija, ba, ba. Wow. Thank you. I am a male performer. And but no sweet 16s. Although I, could, I guess it could be like sweet 16, gonna spread, spread my wings. wings. Oh, you can perform at the sweet 16. <laughs> my chance to shine. Time, sweet 16. This So much more to life. life. Sweet 16. I wonder how much it would cost to get Hillary Duff at a sweet 16. Million. Well, her show got canceled, so maybe it's a little bit cheaper now. She got. <laughs> 
she's balling. I also love how she just doesn't care about anything she, like yeah. at all. She does not care. She really isn't her DGA fair. She has the Lizzie McGuire money, and that's all. That much yeah, and that's where you invest. Like I always think, like if people invest in like houses when they're young. Like, maybe, know. maybe she bought a house or something. I don't know. Because that goes up, right? Like, someone just sold their house. They bought it for $3 million and just sold it for, like, $8 million. I was like, damn, I really should have invested earlier in a house. I mean, I probably couldn't. Like, I spent all my money, but <laughs> it's a good investment. I didn't realize, like, they go up in money. But music videos were more fun than, like, So real much more anyway. fun. So it's God. like, yeah. I would and love the, to do another music video. It's, like, video. iconic because they've all become, like, a lot of them become memes. A lot of them become pop cultural history. So that's, like, really more important. Right. Yeah. That's I agree with that. I know. I really want to sell my catalog. I heard... I think it was who was it? Justin Scott. Bieber. Oh, so his, <laughs> I was oh, gonna say Scotty Sire on the Fox One. <laughs> you could be. Uh, you, you, <laughs> well, I was like, he's kind of. I don't know. I, mean, I think I'm a little. I don't know. He sold his catalog. He sold his catalog for 1.5 million. What? <laughs> yeah, I think he was on a podcast. Oh my god, why am I admitting this? I saw him like a podcast talking about this. I don't follow them, but for some reason he like pops up on my thing. And that's pretty good. I mean, for that's so good. For yeah, because I. He, I mean, I I don't know. I don't want. He's really. He's always been nice. So I'm like, I don't want to say. It, but yeah, he is nice. Of all the people, he was nice until he like defended David, and he's like, he's a good oh, yeah. person. He went do this, and I was like, uh, okay. But he he was always really nice yeah. to me too. Um, so I'm hesitant to say anything. But right, let's sell it like one. That's one point a lot five of million. Money. But then I was thinking, like, <laughs> no one's offered that to me. I got maybe a hundred thousand offer for one song, My Love You Jesus. But I was like, even if I sold my catalog for one point five million, it still would only cover like ten percent of my music videos. True. I need yeah. like twenty million. I mean, out there. I remember the one time that I was like really gagged at your music videos when. And you had the universal like back lot like that was ex- that was like two hundred fifty thousand. That's expensive. That's it why was... they shoot like movies. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. And like you had to get like a fu- like we had a water thing, so you had to get like the fire department yeah. there. Like you had to hire all these people. It was like a whole thing. I don't know what I was doing back then that I made so much money because that was like twenty seventeen. That was before the vlogs. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. I think YouTube was just paying well back yeah. then. Um, and yeah, that was it was good because at the time I had nothing and no one to like live for. So I was just like, let me just spend all this money and, like, on make your dreams come true. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like literally, fun. I don't know if people get it. like the backlogs. Like Christopher Nolan shot mo- like shoots movies there. Like no, that's for sure. that's like, yeah, no. but like context, it's like yeah. actually insane. No, it's like Steven Spielberg all the stuff on the tour. Yeah. It was worth it though for the tour to go by and like I gave a little wave. It was so worth it. Andrew Valentine was my director for all those music videos. He does a lot of gay yeah. friendly films. Um, I have yet to see them. I want to see him. I literally DM him because they play at festivals and stuff. Yeah. Anyways, he's doing great things. I love Andrew Valentine more than anything. But um, and I always love gay everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, the gayer the better. <laughs> Amen, sister. <laughs> Just so random. Just uh, wait. What were we talking about? We were talking about sweet. I don't know. We just walked on this oh little God, tangent. That's intro. Oh, Scotty, sorry. Well, how much did Justin Bieber sell his for? Because I remember when that happened, I was like, God, I really want to sell my catalog. If anyone wants to buy it, but I need at least twenty million because my music videos were ten, and then I can make more music. Two hundred million is what he sold his catalog for. Honestly, you would think that would be more. I know, right? Right? Because I mean, I mean, Yummy was not a hit. He wasn't happy about it. How do you know? There's a lot of. TikTok's now about um, his scooter. Like oh, his, yeah. Oh, so right. So everyone are dumping him. And and one of the things they said with Justin, he wasn't happy about that deal. No one's happy with scooters. That's the one that Taylor was against, right? Yeah. He bought was, all her music. Even Scooter tweeted that he's dropping himself. As a- it was a joke. I hate when people do that. It's like, you're the evil one. Don't make a joke. You're the one <laughs> yeah. that's doing all this. Like, he's like trying to kill the meme by, uh, you stop. Like, I don't know. I don't know him. I don't like him. If Justin Bieber's is 200 million, yeah, I feel like at least you need 20. like a, yeah. 20, let's make it 25. Bump I would it up do, a little bit. Okay, I would do 15 million. So 10 million could pay back the music video and then I could pick the next 5 million for music. I would put it back into my music. Okay. I love making music. I want to do like a Bollywood one. I have so many ideas. I want to do Sad Boy 3. I have a lot of cute pop songs I want to do. I want to do one for my baby. I want to do like a birthday one. You know, I wanted to do one for her before she was born, very Britney Spears. But it's, they're just so expensive. And I'm selling these Birkins. By the way, oh my, I have to give a huge shout out because this is, I saw this minutes before filming this podcast. Matthew Stevens on TikTok. It had 63,000 likes, which is crazy because I had like four. 400,000 views, but it was just, I was scrolling my for you page literal moments before you got here and then I made a TikTok to react to it. Okay. So if you follow me on social media, I have been, I've been really pushing my bags and shoes and I'm sure people are like, is she okay? Like I know I look crazy. I look like a crazy person, like trying to sell my whole life away. Um, okay. So I, I don't even know if I even talked about this. So there's these boots I wanted, these Givenchy boots. Oh, I, I saw, I saw this TikTok. You did? I did see this. The yeah. Guy, yes. About, okay. But did I ever mention this? Because I'm like, how did he know? I, I don't I, You must have. And when you were saying what you're going to sell for, you must have mentioned. I swear I just said shoes. Here's why. One, these boots are really hard to come by. They make them wide calf. So my size in wide calf, there's two in the United States right now. And so I was just like, I don't want to tell anyone because like, what if they go buy my size? <laughs> you know, oh, if you want to buy my size, it's 38 wide calf. So, but um, I, so I didn't want to tell anyone. And I also was just like, oh, I don't. 
I'm not, I don't care if people copy me once I have it. I just don't want to look like I'm copying someone. So if I thought, oh, I want this, then someone else goes and buys it, and then it looks like I'm copying them. Yeah. So we'll put this out. It's like the Elvis name. Like, we'll put this out. I want these Givenchy shark boots that are pink crystals. They are crazy. And I, I wasn't going to mention it because it is so lavish, too. Like, they're like, they're really expensive. They're really expensive. How much? They're more than I thought because I, this is my first time telling Moses too. <laughs> oh, no one. I was like, why are you so hesitant? <laughs> because I swear when I told you, I really did think this was the amount, but that was the amount for the purse. <laughs> Oh and I was like, oh no. And then Moses was kind of on board because there's like a special event we're doing soon. And he's like, well, you, sh- you should. And he's, you know, he's very like, we need to, first of all, we have to pay off like pass. We're still paying off our wedding. We're still paying off so much shit. So it's like, yes, we have to pay off things on top of that. Like, you know, we, we should probably save some money and Moses is like a saver. So, you know, all this stuff like that. So he helped. And granted, I love it because he helps me because honestly, I would be so broke. You know what I mean? He does help me with this. So I appreciate when he's like rational with me, but, um, but I was like, oh, I just really want these. They just speak my name. So I told him and it was like, you know, uh, there I was like, oh, the $3,000. He's like, okay, well, you know what? There's a special event coming up. Like you should buy them for that. Like, you know what I mean? And so I was like, okay. And then, but, but, but I've been selling a lot on Posh. I've been selling a lot on Posh, all this stuff like that. Anyways, they're $6,800. With uh, tax, they're seven, over 7000 I expected a lot worse, I think. Oh, did you? I think because you were so hesitant that I was like, oh my God, this must be like 20000 yeah. like a Birkin. <laughs> like, yeah. Never will I ever spend 20000 on anything again. Like my Birkin that I'm trying to sell now, I spent 48000 on. See, like that's kind of the, like that's a threshold for like where I expect you to be when you're saying something's quite crazy. Yeah, like, my crazy now is different than my crazy yeah. back in 2020 when I was just balling, just making way too much money. Now I was making way too much money. I'd be buying houses. Like I don't know what I, again, and this was like when Moses was very new into my life, so he wasn't telling me about my finances or anything like that. I wish, you know. Thank God we bought this house with that money, because honestly, I'd probably have spent all of that. Both of us, by the way. I should always like clarify that. Seriously, like when I met Moses, I was making a lot of money, but I was spending all of it. Birkins, Rolexes, like I was spending all of it. So when we talked about getting a house together, like he had so much in savings that I was like, Shh. and luckily I was making a lot. So my monthly, I was able to like put down to a down payment, so I didn't look like I was this broke <laughs> bitch, which I kind of was, you know. But he had the same amount, so we matched it perfectly. So anyways, I like to just reiterate. One day I'll just. Anyways, I like to reiterate that because people just really think like I bought this whole house on one hand people think I'm broke and I always rent in another hand they think I pay for everything about this whole house which whatever so he helped me with that you know get a house because again I told talked about this before I always thought buying a house might you need to four million did we talk about this no like if I thought if you had a four million dollar house you had to put had four million in your bank oh, account so yeah. I just was like I'm never gonna save that much at one time so, so screw it yeah. right so I didn't know about percentages any of that stuff like that and there's no way I would have been able to afford this house had he not saved all his money anyways um back to the boots so I but again I didn't talk about these because one then they're really lavish so I don't want to be that person either especially because like people always think we're like so balling and here's the thing I, there's been times when I make so much there's the times when I don't you know but I'm always good the the search bar of this TikTok said Trisha made us broke so I had to make a TikTok <laughs> reacting to be like don't worry guys it's okay like you don't have to like now I kind of felt bad people are like fundraising for me um but it's just like damn uh which is very very sweet and like the sentiment of the video was like actually the sweetest it was like a 10 minute long video it was so sweet it was this guy's Matthew Stevens he was Mariah Carey's assistant for a couple years then he had a year of like depression he said you know Trisha was like my best friend in my head she like helped me through so much like just her videos were consistent and like my life was very inconsistent and so he now he's doing well he has like his own company it's called like illusion bronze and it's very cool it's like self tanner based on your hair color eye color and like skin color so like like he mixes it it's very cool um and I love self tanner and he was talking about the girls that go to CVS and I'm like that's me I do my jergens whatever uh so it actually is like a great product so on one hand, it was it was just like it was just the sweetest video. It was just so sweet. So he was just like, you know, I really want to buy her these boots, but I don't have the money. So like, you know, why don't we all like if you buy 130 bottles of my tanner, which I'm like, this is also really good marketing. But I was like, you know, <laughs> anyways. But the, the the video was like so sweet. It was actually so sweet. He's like, you know, 130 bottles, and I can buy her the boots, and maybe she'll like have me on the podcast or something like that, and I can like present her the boots. So I did my I did a TikTok response. But I want to say it here, literally the nicest TikTok ever. Like this the sentiment was so sweet. Like the words were so sweet. You know. When I make my videos, I never think of like how like they're helping anyone. Like I think they're just so silly and like I don't know. I don't know. I just it was it like touched my heart to like know that like during an era of depression for you, like, you know, I was able to like keep you company. And as I said in my TikTok, like for me, I made those videos because I was so lonely. I was so depressed. So I was constantly making videos because I was just lonely. I had no one to eat with. I had no one to talk to. So I continued to do those even on my main channel, which is a flop compared to this channel. But I do it for the 30,000 people because you know what? Those people, they, they they probably feel the same way. Like they don't have anything to watch or anyone to talk to or eat with. And so I keep making those. So there's moments now that I have a great husband that I can eat every meal with. I have to be like, okay, I got to go out. I'm going to eat fast food with my viewers. You know, I want them to feel that one-on-one connection because like it means a lot. So I was expecting to go to the comments of that 
TikTok. I had 63,000 likes and a ton of comments. I used to walk into the comments and be like, why are you doing this? Like, why are we giving, you know, it's like going to the NPC thing and people like are tipping me a dollar. Why are you tipping a millionaire dollar? First of all, I'm going to hustle for that dollar. That's why I do those NPC <laughs> things. I will hustle all day long for what I want. Um, but the comments were so nice. Like, they're like, Trisha has gotten me like through so much and like so many hard times. She's like the friend in my head. She like, you know, goes through, she's so relatable. She talks about things openly and honestly. And I was just like, not to like to my own horn, but I mean, for so long, I felt so down about myself and I feel like I've just only put out negativity and like everyone hates me. And so like to read that, I was like, and then he also said something like the past three years, she's shown like a lot of growth. I'm like, oh my God, someone recognizes like, you know, cause so many people are like, she hasn't changed. She's the same. And it can be hard to hear, but I was like, you know, I just keep going for me, obviously changing for my husband and my daughter and stuff like that. But it was just so nice. It was like the nicest TikTok ever. Matthew Stevens, if you want to come on the podcast, I don't know where you're at. If you're in LA, please come on next week. Um, I would love to have you on. Talk about your illusion bronzer. Talk about this. And um, any money that is raised, if you want, we can donate to like a charity. I think that's literally so nice. I don't know what charity. Maybe Maui. We'll call Oprah and the rock up and donate to Maui or just <laughs> donate directly. But I, there is there is something there. So I, I think he did say, I don't know, I saw a comment, he sold 30 bottles already, he's like 100 more to go, so if by any chance we do raise that money and you want to, um, if you're down, Matthew, if you want to donate that money, we can do it together here on the podcast, come on, talk about your bronzer, we'll donate it to a good cause, I thought it was literally the sweetest thing in that fact, so many people were like, I'm buying a bottle to support this, it was so nice, and I appreciate it more than anything, and I'm going to still be peddling my Chanel bags and Birkins to get these boots, we will get them, we will manifest them, but we'll also donate, whatever, if you're, if you're down or you can keep the money honestly like I, either way or I'll just buy a bunch of bronzers from you which I will I think it's amazing so illusion bronze Matthew Stevens it touched my heart in so many ways like you don't even know like I was like about to cry this morning if I didn't have my glam I had a King Kardashian moment where I was like I'd cry but my glam looks so good but seriously my eyes were like tearing up the comments made me like 63,000 likes on it too and I was like and he like raised money for like a Lyft driver oh, his, like, yeah. with, who had like breast cancer he raised 25 I was like god this is like a guard this is like an angel on earth so the fact that he wanted to raise money for the Givenchy boots I don't even know how he knew the ones I wanted uh, I'm still shook by it because I'm like I really remember being so careful not to mention anything but now that we're talking about it if I do get these boots which I will you know because I have a lot of inquiries I gotta just get back to the emails but if, when I get the boots I'm gonna wear them like every episode of Paris Hilton everybody Paris Hilton has the boots so I'm just gonna like wear them every episode and make the money off this way but it's very sweet I was it was very nice and I hope you guys do buy the product it looks great and you know hopefully we can raise some money for charity Elysian Bronze check it out that is very sweet that's a did good you see twist it? Did you I did it? see it yeah I was like oh, that's so <laughs> what tell me it was like very like you know like we will survive it was yes. given like very much <laughs> like, like join together me. we can do it yeah like, I'll put your name on the card I'll present them to her like seriously together we can get Trisha the booze it was like it was How so sweet sweet I mean I do understand there's like like literally people like dying out there you know so we'll, we'll donate it to something for sure if you're down um and you can come on the podcast and i just thought it was so amazing and so sweet and i was just like oh my god it just it was nice i don't know nice people are nice and at the end he's just very much like he's like you know i just want to do good things for good people it's <laughs> like, so yes, sweet seven thousand Givenchy. we'll get them he's a manifester i'm a manifester we're gonna get them i visualize them i see them um but i'm gonna have to get them sooner than later because now that this is out there's only They're, two pairs of my size. Someone's going to buy them up and then upcharge you. Somebody like. will, huh? So, yeah. All right. We'll see what we got on the credit cards. Continue to max. <laughs> no. Uh, Investment. Yeah. We, uh, you know, I'm, I'm killing it on posh. You know, $100 here and there. It goes a long way. We're going to, we're going to save I know, up I did for see, it. was it your Instagram story where you had like all, everything you were shipping out? I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like Trish, <laughs> Trish Studios, <laughs> Trish shipping facility. Like. <laughs> Mom is the just Trish warehouse. She be she ships she ships out probably like fifty to like sixty packages a day. That's crazy. Yeah, and some of the stuff we sell is like really cheap, like you know twenty dollars stuff like yeah. that. And then there's some high ticket items in there. So <laughs> I know it looks like I'm selling my whole closet. Don't be sad for me. My daughter's birthday's coming up. We're doing something extravagant for that. So you know I just like to hustle. So my rationale is this: is like I, I do feel. Like, now that I have a family, it is so irresponsible for me to go, like, buy $7,000 boots when I'm not making that, you know? So I think if we were making, like, a lot again, it would not be an issue. But, um, you know, your priorities shift. But this is one thing that I'm like, I love. And then I did see the bag. So I was like, oh, I kind of want the bag, too. But that's, like, that's like $10,000. I don't know. Anyways, buy my Birkin. Someone out there who has, like, so much money that does not care, please buy my Birkin <laughs> or my Chanel. You can email me and check it out on my thing. Um, but, yeah. Anyways, that is literally just, like, who cares? First world problems. But it was so nice. I sent it to everyone. I sent it to my husband. I sent it to everyone. Now there's a story behind it. Now there's like a reason to get these boots yeah, so we can all be like, like, we did it. <laughs> 
to risk that you have to do it. Yeah. yeah. For the, the people. It's not just for you anymore. It's for the people. Yeah. And now we're doing this podcast. You know, I think I have to do like 10 episodes and I could pay them off. So, you know, yeah. something like that. I don't know. Yeah. When the ads start coming in. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So we don't have one this week, but sponsor, <laughs> go look at Blissy and Manscaped from my last two videos and check it out. Um, so, yeah, that was really great. And thanks for the manifest. That We haven't even gotten to the hot topics, but thank you for the manifesting on that. And I also was saying I manifested you, by the way. I was going to say this earlier, too. This was not in my notes. But, um, you know, when we were talking about watching on Strawberry, I was like, oh, my, I feel like we manifested <laughs> you so long ago because you are such a star and a treasure of this oh, show. So I was like, I really feel like watching that so many years ago. I remember we'd watch Strawberry 17 and then, like, we'd see you and we're like, what is he doing there? He's so like talented and does so much. Like he's like everything. And then now you're here and thank you strawberry for discovering him. <laughs> Megan Carrera. Oh, is that her name? Megan Camarera. Cam- 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 yeah. Cam- Maria. We love her. I'm like, she knew, she knew the talent, the star, the quality. Of I, I, it's always like a pinch meme. Every time I hear, I'm just like, Oh, like it just feels so right. You know, uh, I'm like, I love it more than anything in the world. Uh, like I just so editing it. Like I'll be up all night editing, but I love it. You know what I mean? Oh, you like, really do. You work so hard, which is another reason we need to start getting more ads, more. Every- no, it's actually doing so I'm so grateful for this because we need to full time this all the time. It's the best. I really, and I'm glad everyone else like gets the vibe because I feel like our vibe in here between the three of us is so like light and positive and I'm glad that other people pick up. Yeah. Yeah. I always want that to be the case because I've always loved you. I've always wanted to work with you and I'm just like so excited. It's the best. I love it. You make it what it is, the editing, everything. I'm like, God, you really are like the superstar. I love that. The beginning is always (laughs) us just being like, we're still happy. We're so thankful. Yeah. No, but but it's so true. It's so true. When we went and celebrated something last week week we were like so excited to celebrate and then like so many things came this week to celebrate there's just like and we don't have a day to celebrate anymore we're like we're so busy we're like oh my god we're celebrating so much there's more to celebrate <laughs> so last night we just ordered mastro's takeout because we were trying to celebrate something but we didn't have time to go out so we're like we'll just order it and it was great and it's wonderful and you should always have gratitude and be thankful in the moment yeah, it feels good it feels good it feels good mm-hmm. it feels good the vibes <laughs> are right and moses thank you too for being you i love you so much okay this feels like i just won an award <laughs> I know. I don't even have the boots yet. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the price of those boots? It's definitely not what we expect. It's double what we thought it is. I know. But the occasion, which they don't know yet, right, is kind of your dream come true. So it's like my Cinderella moment. So it is an award. Right, right. It's an <laughs> this award. This is like your Oscar award oh yeah oscar you're right, yeah, right. okay put your emmy back there we'll put the Givenchy oh, yeah. boots back here but yeah once people see when and where you wear them right they'll understand why yeah but maybe not the purse or maybe the purse just heard about it I okay have to think about it, it. please Process buy my it. rainbow birkin then i can buy it please 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 i know you really need to sell that birkin and jojo like that really just makes the most you know sense. what she dm me she's like i kind of love this and i was like but i feel so weird when like friends ask me because i'm like do you just want it should i just give it to you like i feel what <laughs> no. weird because like, if she wanted to buy it i feel so weird to like give her here's my wire information girl like she's send me some money. Okay. i think she, can... yeah, she kind of is she's like in a lamborghini in her yeah. thing so i was like oh my she's also everywhere she's like on every canceled just show that she was on the podcast like she's on she's on everything yeah. right now like, so okay. she she can handle it i think she would love it it's very jojo coded it, it is, is very jojo coded. when she dm me i was like girl it's kind of you <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is jojo see why hit me up i mean she does kill it damn um all right so we got that beyonce tonight is her birthday we're filming this monday tonight's her birthday oh yeah so i guess it's like a big show everyone all my friends are going i know tonight. everyone's and now i understand why everyone like fomo for not going to renaissance tour everyone is at renaissance literally everyone yeah it actually looks fun like i you know i like i don't i'm not like a fan or a hater or anything i just don't know i don't listen to her music that much but she does look like she puts on a great show yeah she it's looks like, amazing it's, so, it's like visuals are crazy outfits are insane the choreography is wild like it looks like a spectacle yeah and she looks like she changes outfits i was talking to mose about this like she looks like she changes outfits for the same song every concert like every i don't know what her like wardrobe is like backstage but it's like every she keeps mixing it up and it's kind of fun because like people will tweet oh this is what she wore today for this set yeah no i think it's so cool because like the blue ivy one where she dances with blue ivy like they always are in a different (laughs) outfit and i was like do they have a different one for each show mose like it's not that expensive i was like okay but still that's like those costumes cheap i especially i mean i guess if you're beyonce people are like throwing themselves like put you in their clothes so that also like makes a big difference that's true <laughs> i mean gerard way did that he he was a different 
character each uh do you know drag way yeah of course I, it makes it more fun especially like if you even if you're not there like to follow along and see like oh what are they wearing today? Uh, you know? yeah i had so much fun when my chemical romance toured when i was pregnant and i was just like but by the time they get down the states i was literally nine months pregnant i was like oh man and then when they got to la i just had my baby and i was so torn i still to this day get really sad about not going <laughs> supposedly they're gonna be on tour with fallout boy i don't know if that's like true because i was like they're never gonna tour again because i was the first tour in 20 years but he wore a different outfit each show and i was like so so sad i was just like man i wish i could have been there to see him i tried but i didn't try really i just sat at home <laughs> but so much you could do it's yeah like- there's no one i really would go out for except for them and maybe the weekend but i was just saying this too like the weekend like how i love the weekend i love the idol it got canceled by the way i know it broke right after we ended last time he sells out too and i'm just like but how could have a show can a solo male performer put on i know i think that too i was in a rivalry with my co-worker because he was like anti eras tour and pro the like drake's tour uh-huh. and then we had another co-worker <laughs> who was like neutral and she went to both and she had to like you know mediate and she confirmed that drake was like definitely lesser because it was like one outfit the whole time like didn't have any changes oh, we didn't change didn't have an outfit change um didn't have like a live band or dance or like choreography or anything oh, and it's yeah. just like if i'm going to like spend money and the effort to get to it's so much effort to go to a show like i want to be like in it i want to be like amazed i want to be surprised and like i don't don't know no one's really giving that besides like you know taylor beyonce yeah no i i think that too i think on one hand maybe that says a lot about the performer maybe they're just like so captivating that they don't need all that um because the weekend too abel he is uh always in one (laughs) outfit because we talked about maybe possibly doing taylor swift in uh the weekend for halloween i have to get like a pink version of his white outfit i do love that little mask he was wearing all (laughs) tour but um like he kind of just stands there but like maybe he's an amazing performer Uh, his super bowl was good Uh, there was a lot of like stuff happening he won the super bowl (laughs) what year was that he headlined Damn. It was like 2021, I think. He might be in the Illuminati. How is he getting all this? I literally didn't know. He was like the number number one like artist. No. Well, okay. Can I say, Moses was playing as we were on like a road trip. We went like an hour and a half in the car and he was playing these songs. And the only reason I was like, I asked halfway through, I was like, is this the weekend? Because I knew the, I can't feel my face. And the one song I know. And um, he was playing it the whole time. I'm like, I really thought this was Michael Jackson. Like I thought it was like Michael Jackson, (laughs) which is like everything. So I was like, I kind of get it. I mean, his vocals are everything and uh, his acting skills are great. So I, you know, I'm not a hater on it, but maybe Abel can come on now that the idol is canceled. Maybe he can talk about it. Or is it still the strike? I don't know. I guess he's an actor now. (laughs) The music, if he wants to come over and promote his uh <laughs> come on just just yeah. we did just break a million views on our tan episode so, so we could get you yeah, a million yeah. maybe <laughs> uh i love him uh where did we go on that i don't know oh beyonce okay. beyonce um so i love i love watching all the tiktoks of beyonce i love seeing all the celebrities at beyonce Meghan markle was there I was like okay girl um pedro pascal he was living he was, he was living. living his best queen life <laughs> I guess in one way it could just be maybe he's just open. Either way, he's very gay friendly, which we yeah. love that too. So whether he's gay or gay friendly, so he was on. Was it on Sarah Paulson's live? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think he felt about that? Do you think he's like goes with it or he's like why? I why? Think they're really good friends, and she's she goes live at like all these different concerts and stuff. Um, and she's gone live with him before. I forgot what event, but she does it like pretty often. So I think he's kind of into it. I think he thinks it's fun. Okay, okay. Because she like they're such good friends that even like before Pedro like blew up, he was like broke and. She she that she would give him money to like buy lunch like oh my god yeah, who, told, like, who told the story him or her i think i think he did oh well like, that. yeah like I he you know they give you like a um, money a per diem like per day or whatever oh so she god. would give her her per diem to pedro so he could like afford to <laughs> what were they on what were they doing i forget which show it was a while ago it was he's been in wonder woman he's been in the mandalorian so it was like a a, a long while time ago. ago yeah yeah we love pedro pascal who was the guy do we know i don't know he was just like living his best life i, and I love that i love it so much pedro yeah. pascal is i bet everybody just like loves him even more you know what i mean i've never heard like one bad thing about him you right know? his and on saturday life he just has that like appeal i don't know he's just very cute yeah can we get him on the podcast i was I, maybe actually i feel like if we're he such could. like a like a girly friendly space and i feel yeah. like he would like our vibes you totally. know totally i yeah. think that too i feel like that we have a really good guest next we have so many good guests coming up but we have a really good guest this thursday and his vibes were immaculate yes. he was just like i just feel comfortable here i just love That's it what we love. yeah it's a and safe I space like, yeah <laughs> i love it that's the vibe it does get a little warm in here but i think soon when it gets colder it'll be fine <laughs> i don't know why it gets so hot in this movie room but it, it was funny to see it. like who else megan markle that was the other one I yeah. left everyone gag. Meghan why Markle people, and Prince Harry. Why were 
people gagged about it though. Like she's kind of everywhere, right? Meghan Markle kind of just is. I think mostly because she was also with Prince Harry, so it's like she was like dancing to like I'm a, I'm a, a diva, I'm a, I'm a, a diva, and she was like making out with Prince <laughs> Harry. You didn't. Really oh just... no, where was she making out with him on time moving around? Again? It was uh, like in their box or whatever at the concert. Right. <laughs> but you're anti Meghan Markle, so I know. <laughs> and I go back and forth like, is that misogynistic? I've told you like on the Julie Fox podcast they call me misogynistic because I didn't like Meghan Markle. So then I'm like I need to defend every woman ever. But then I'm kind of like, but what if you just don't like a woman's vibe? Like that's not misogynistic. Like it's, I'm sure a lot of people don't like me. I don't think they're misogynistic. I'm just like not their vibe, not their cup of tea. I go back and forth with it. I think it's okay to not like a woman. No, it is okay to not like a woman. I don't think but... we need to harp on them. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, Megan. Oh, well, I kind of was that for a minute, but like you know, <laughs> if she wants to live her life, whatever, you know, let her live her life. She did say she thought the Queen was like medieval times in their documentary, and I was just like, what, girl? <laughs> Maybe she was trying to be like Jessica Simpson, like dumb and cute or something. I don't know. I, don't, I have a soft spot for Megan Markle. I don't know why. Do you? I really like her. I liked her little. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read I Harry's do. book? He was like, um, no, he's like, William and Kate were starstruck because they were such huge fans of suits. Like, <laughs> nobody is a huge fan of suits. No. Well, now, Shoots, like, blew up. It's, like, the biggest show on Netflix right now. Like, randomly. but the old, is it back or is it the no, old it's episodes? The old, yeah. It's, like, the big. <laughs> it's such a bad show. I don't watch it. But... That and what's the new one? Succession? Succession? Is that the one we watched? Oh. We watched, like, two episodes. And I'm like, what? People also like that one. I'm not it's not, really not gagged for it. Yeah. We tried. We tried to be <laughs> on it. And I was like, no, not gagged. I wasn't gagged for Gossip Girl either. I love you, but I can't stand Gossip the Girl. The original Gossip Girl? Yeah. Did, but you tried watching it like I recently? I watched the full first season when um, I think I was sick or something. I just sat on the couch and watched Gossip Girl. It was like okay, but it's not like the vibe that everyone says it is. I think if you watch it in the time, like I haven't really revisited it, but I like to just keep it in the memory of me being like, in high school watching it and thinking it was like the greatest show in the world. Right. I it's think definitely that's dated. Safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is for sure. Cause you know, some of like holds up like home improvement. I really think holds up, but, um, the gossip girl just dated. I don't know. Like Blair Waldorf really, I think was like my gay awakening though. In a really? way. Yeah. She was just so, I mean, I was Why? also like 300 pounds, like nerdy acne and like, but she made me feel like I was like, I could be that girl. It was like aspirational. Blair's I think. the brunette or the blonde? The brunette. Yeah. I like the blonde. Like lively. Yeah. What's her name on the show? <laughs> Serena. Serena. Yeah. I like. I, I. I guess I like her. She was like, cause she was like the real. She was like the real model. The other girl. I just saw one episode where the the brunette was trying to model, and then the blonde was like, just oh, I'm just here. I'm gonna uh, model too. I don't know. Do you remember that episode? <laughs> yeah. They got in the fight over it, but then yeah. they got together. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the guy who plays Chuck Bass is he supposed to be like this hot hottie hot? I'm like, yeah. No. That was like kind of a Chase Crawford but... can't do. Um, really anti Chase Crawford. I'm anti Chase Crawford. Wow. Yeah. Was he in Lost? Was he the one in Lost or did I get that mixed up with someone else? Why are you thinking of Ian Summerholder? Okay, from yeah, Vampire yeah, yeah. I do get them mixed yeah. up. Um, love Penn Badgley, even though I know he wouldn't like me at all, but I love him so much. And I love Taylor Momsen, so. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a whole vibe. Bad, okay, I so, also do yeah. love Taylor Momsen. Yeah, yeah, she's great. She was just on Penn Badgley's. Yeah, I, saw, I, saw, I yeah. the makeup. Yeah. I know. Gosh, I do love him. I know. How I am I so. sitting? Am I, do I look okay? <laughs> okay, shoe cam. We're just totally happy in Gwendy Williams. Do you think she'd care? I don't think she would. I, she might. <laughs> she might call me like, girl. <laughs> Cease and desist. Uh, zoom in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no shoe cam, just a zoom in. Just a zoom in. <laughs> okay, thanks for the shoe cam. Yeah, so Patrick Brown's gonna be on say, yeah, well, we're not going. I know. Damn. We should put this out a day early. Maybe someone could have got us tickets. I don't really know. All my glam people are going there. Even like, if we got going. tickets, would you have gone? No. No. Exactly. <laughs> I just don't like people. I don't like a crowd. Like, who would I go see? I would go see... I'd go see Carol G for sure. She was just at the Rose yeah. Bowl. I missed out. All my friends went too. And I was like, ah. That's actually who I got this inspiration from. This jersey was being sold outside of the Carol G concert. And a really good friend of mine went and she had this on her story. And I was like... And I started this morning. And I was like, girl... I just happy you got the, th- but she's so cool. I was like, no, I love that you got it. You know, I love that. In the previous segment, you literally just said you're scared of people thinking you copy them, but meanwhile, like you cosplay like every. Episode. I know, I know, I know. We're just a cosplay episode. Well, no way, Carol G's gonna see this. I did DM her and ask her if she wanted to be on my podcast, but she has like 65 million followers, so maybe, maybe she'll see it. I love it. She's she's iconic. We love Burning Man. Should we talk about that? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Burning Man. So. We have a Burning Man expert here. Thank we'll bring God. in our Thank yes. God. We have our Burning Man resident. I told him he should be doing a TikTok because TikTok Burning Man TikToks were blowing up. He's gone. How many years have you gone, babe? What's your Burning Man name? Is there a name for Burning Man? My name was Tricky B. Tricky Buddha. That what? Yeah. That is not real, is it? All right. It just okay, came you look back great. From Burning now Man. you look like Tricky this is Jesus. Exactly what I look like in Burning Man. I love it. Okay, you look great. All right. So Burning Man happens. How many years have you gone to Burning Man? 
Like five years. Five years in a row. Mm-hmm. You love it. First of all, when this was all happening, your first reaction was like, okay, so let's preface this. So Burning Man happened, what, 70,000 people at Burning Man? Is that what they said? Now, we, yeah, there was 70,000 70, people. Man. I just saw like Chris Rock and like Diplo get on a pickup truck. And, I'm like, <laughs> and they said they were walking out of Burning Man. I'm like, well. For miles. Yeah, miles. <laughs> like six miles or something. Like, where are you walking to? You didn't come in walking. Why are you walking? You're also VIP. Like, Moses was telling me there's a whole. Okay, so. Burning Man, he was like, I want to go. And I was like, that sounds awful, like being in the desert and no water. He's like, but there's like a VIP Burning Man where if you're bougie, maybe if I sell my Birkin, we can do this. You can go. And they'll like get your costume for you. They'll get you waters, right? Or what else do they do at the VIP Everything. Burning Man? It's a huge stand, like even costumes, makeup, everything is catered yeah. for you. It's a glam like, team on Burning yeah. Man, yeah. It's like glamping, I guess. Yes. <laughs> glamping. <laughs> but you were not a glamper. You went raw. No, we 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 were the opposite of that. We would make everything ourselves. We would build the huge camp. You build kitchens, showers, everything. Kitchens? How do you build a yeah. kitchen in the desert? Exactly. <laughs> you bring all the materials. First time he had bacon. He was vegetarian for 15 years. First time he had bacon was at Burning Man. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Okay, so Burning Man's in the middle of the desert. It's in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to bring water. You have to bring all stuff because they have nothing, right? Everything. It's about self-sustainability. And what's the point? <laughs> like, why are people doing this? There's no music festival. There's music there. There is like performers? Yeah, there's music there. There's like raves and stuff. I think it started a long time ago, but it's really about self-expression. And that's okay. what I like about it. It's like it. artistic people. They have sculptures. Yeah, you yeah. go like here, you know, like you express yourself, but you still have to buy everything and everyone else buys the same thing. Mm-hmm. Over there, like you make your own clothes. We build our own cars. Uh, you make sculptures. You make artwork. Yeah. So it's like the ultimate self-expression. It's like roughing it. But you have enough money to last two weeks, so you're not really roughing it. You're like, well, we saved money, so now we can pretend like we don't have money or something. (laughs) Okay. Well, a lot of people there literally spend the whole year preparing for a Burning Man. Yeah, you said, Moses has said he's never taken a vacation ever. He's never tried to take vacation. But then you said you'd go to Burning Man for what, two weeks? Yeah, we would go for like two weeks. You were there for two weeks. Yeah, we go for one week to build and prepare. And then the, oh. and then Burning oh. Man, Burning Man itself, the event lasts a week. And is there a man that burns? Is there like a giant man that burns, right? Yeah, there's an actual sculpture. Is it like Wicca, Wicker Man? Very much so. It, what's the, what's, why is the point of that? Like, why are we doing a Burning Man thing? I think, I mean, it, you can't really, there's no real reason. Because it goes back to like some guys uh, in San Francisco years ago doing that as a thing. And it just grew. It kind of organically grew and grew and grew and became something. That's crazy. What's happening? So okay, so now it's like flooding. Did you see the videos <laughs> of like people like water up to their ankles? But like supposedly it's supposed to end a day, but they're like trapped there. So no one's going home. <laughs> no one uh, do we have an up- up to date, update about this? Do we know if they're like getting out or are they stayed there? What's the update? What's the up to date? The roads might open today, but so okay. far they're still closed. Because in my being like oh my god they're stuck there they're trapped there like these people are literally running for survival <laughs> so why did chris rock and and <laughs> diplo well, run diplo, <laughs> diplo had a, like a, a gig so he had to go to his next gig mm. so he was just trying to escape that's what I, you had thought you thought maybe yeah. chris rock was trying to film a movie or something yeah i think they just didn't want to like be stuck there so they ran out of burning man or walked hiked yeah hiked by themselves yeah i think diplo said he was just hiking and then was trying to like hitchhike However, he could. So Chris Rock and Diplo are just like, let me just like get on. I would never get on a random person's back pickup truck ever. Even though I'll die, I'll go die in that desert before I do that. Because you'll probably die that way. They always say don't get in the car. Once the car starts moving, then it's done. Like if you get kidnapped, if anything, like make sure you don't get taken to another location. That's always like the rule of survival. So like what? When you're there, everyone around are for the say. festival. Oh. Imagine, okay, you're in a Taylor Swift concert and something bad happened. You're going to go with the fans. You know, you guys are bonded together. Yeah, camaraderie. Oh, you trust okay. each other. Right. Same thing with Burning Man. Like all the people there, like there's no crime. There's seventy thousand people and there's no crime. Right, you were saying that, which I thought would be so much crime because like you have no cell phone reception. So like that's the time. That's the no, time. That's but like it's so purge. hard to get there. So you're not gonna have criminals like working hard. It's not that hard. I remember there. Def Noodles got there on a like just a Toyota. <laughs> and what a disaster that was. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> oh. Do you know Def Noodles? I do know. Yeah. I hope he's okay. I don't know. That was really bad. Yeah, that was. He went to like Burning Man with just a Toyota and like no I no think, water. Like, water. <gasps> Yeah, I don't and think he his knew. Poor assistant, yeah. But the thing is that every year when you're at Burning Man, something like this happened, something of that nature, some natural disaster or something. Every year? And the thing is that when you're at Burning Man, you don't feel it and you don't know about it, but then you hear the news about it. So people just like to make news about Burning Man. Like they they even made a rumor that there's like Ebola. What's Ebola? (laughs) At Burning Man. (laughs) What? Why? Wait, what is that? Is that the one with the poop disease? Like you wash your hands and don't wash your hands? So like every year there's some rumor. (laughs) 
mean, that's probably true. Snooze. If there's no it toilets, just, it just makes news. and no water. I'm sure that's true. I'm sure so many people are not washing their hands there. Yeah, but they're fine. Oh my god! Wait, do you know anyone there now? You, your friends go over here. Probably, yeah. We had a whole table of Burning Man people at our wedding. It was everyone <laughs> that he went to Burning Man with, and they were a rowdy. We called them Table Ten. They were yeah. the rowdiest. I love them though. They, they were, were the they were so much fun. I was shocked because we met during quarantine. So at our wedding, it was like the first time meeting any of Moses's friends, and they were like so like wild and like gallivantly. Like, like he's so quiet. So I was like, <laughs> it's so weird to be friends with these people. They did come to our Halloween party, your birthday, mm-hmm. um, and they were just so out there and wild. And you're just so quiet. So I was just like. I can't picture you being with these people. Everyone needs somebody quiet to be around. You're the quiet one. (laughs) What was your part in Burning Man? Were you a cook? No, I would. um, I designed a lot of stuff. Like when we made our art car, I helped design that. um, Building stuff. Kind of like here, you know, I do the decor. So I bring all the Uh, fabrics and the furniture and make make the spaces kind of cozy and fun. Oh my God, you are good at that. He's very good at that. But you're also a very good cook. So you could be the cook too. He's the best cook. He's been cooking dinners every night. (laughs) The lasagna we had. Oh my God, just so good. He makes me breakfast. I think he's the best. You really do everything. You are the ultimate Burning Man man. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We have Burning Man here. I would go with you, but we need to definitely glamp it up. Do VIP, (laughs) Salad Birkin. I wanted to get that VIP experience, you know. So it's okay. So you're thinking they're exaggerating this like it's not that big of a deal like they're gonna be able to get out they're gonna be fine i just know people over there are having fun like it's fun when there's a disaster at burning man like it's a it's a <laughs> so it's a, a burning crazy man burning yeah he's experience. like this like, looks it, honestly he goes if you're there it'd be like so much fun i'm like i don't know, I really like, don't know this seems like a fire festival situation <laughs> where people like don't are not having food or water <laughs> but the difference is these people can prepare it yeah fire festival they went and they expected to be served food here you know nobody's gonna serve you water food or anything so you come prepared the survival of the yeah. fittest. And Would you, could Oscar go to the Burning Man in this outfit? Because it looks like Burning Man. Or is this more Renaissance fair? Um, they'll think he's a poser in this outfit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not a poser in the Halloween costume? <laughs> do, they, do they judge there? Do they judge posers? This is the one thing. Okay, the one beef I have with Burning Man. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the Burning Man team. Scandal. Years and years and years ago, Burning Man was all the misfits and people that didn't belong anywhere. So that was like their place to belong in a family. And then when it became kind of, you know, it became something, then those people became the gatekeepers. And suddenly... Who became the gatekeepers? The original Burning Man? The original misfits, you know. Suddenly they were the one Mm -hmm. not accepting people, making it hard for people to feel good and accepted. Oh, so so you're, you're on the side of the newcomers. Always. Like, the, everyone well, should be invited. just against gatekeeping, so... That's interesting. That's very My Chemical Romance fans, yeah. too. They're like, like we're the misfits and we're the outcasts, but they're like, you can't come in. I'm like, oh my well, god. Well, just a human Yeah. What nature. is that? I don't like that. I don't like gatekeepers. I guess maybe you feel like an own Like, if you were there from the beginning of, like, an ownership kind of thing. You know? Like... Yeah. It's funny because doesn't like Heidi Klum go to Burning Man now? Like Jared Leto, like all well, Jared There's Leto would, yeah. he would Heidi yeah. Klum in yeah, her lots of fit thirty calorie. What is hers? One hundred thirty pounds. <laughs> Or 900 calories. 900 calories. She would diet. thrive over there. Yeah, she would she's love like that. Skinny era. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Heidi Klum? I haven't seen her. So lots of celebrities go there. Lots of rich people from Silicon Valley. You know, all the wow. Facebook, Elon mm- Musk, and Moses is connected to A list. By the way, we never ever can talk about it ever. But we had a couple A list people at our like rehearsal dinner. Oh like, my god, yeah, he's kind of has some A list connections. So I'm like, can we get them on the podcast? Because he's known some of them for so long. I'm like, can we just that would this would blow Drake out of the water? Some of his A list people, and I'm like. Like, and I met them a couple times. So I'm like, can we ask? Them? I'm one of those people. I'm the same way. I would never ask someone. I would never. If I knew someone like super famous, I would never ask because I think it is like weird. But that's now you know, we have the right that's... platform. Yeah, yeah, he knows so many. I'm just like shook by it all. But um, well, we pray for the people at Burning Man. I mean, seventy thousand people. Hopefully, no one died. Right? I mean, no one's dead. No, I don't think. I mean, we haven't heard of it's that. It's just water. Yeah, there the was like that... a rumor one person died, but I think <gasps> it was just. I think it was fake. How do you know well, it's fake? Because it was not. No one confirmed it. Right, it would be bigger news. There's yeah. natural, died. so f- when you have 70,000 people, there's natural death that will occur. Like somebody yeah. will get a heart attack. Some, oh my something God. natural, just statistics. But the only people that died at Burning Man was usually under the influence and they like ran into the fire. No. Uh, yeah, like they ran into the Burning Man. Wait, or something. That's... <laughs> yeah. God, that's extreme. It is. That's Are why you sure you should that's be happened? careful. Yeah. Who, why? No one's with them, or no one even not with them no is like, yeah. Them uh, the, what? Yeah, there's no stopping a crazy person. Oh, you know? my, oh my God. Wow, they're intoxicated, but still. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Makes me not want to go to Burning Man. <laughs> oh my God, that's so intense. Yeah, it sounds crazy. Like, I'd rather go to Burning Man than Coachella for sure, because Coachella just sounds horrible too. Have you been? <laughs> no. Have it's you like been? not my no. Yeah, Coachella is war. It's horrible. Coachella is horrible. 
I mean, yeah. you have to be a teenager that wants to just watch music. I feel like it's like out. old people too. Like all these old influencers are going now that they've been going for like 15 years. Like, please stop. <laughs> Even Vanessa Hudgens gave up Coachella, which is like, she did. Yeah, she didn't go last year. So it was like, what a maybe legend. it's a sign of the time. You know? But also, I think it's probably because she wasn't with Austin Butler because it wasn't their thing. They go every year and they were always like, that's true. Yeah, they yeah. do all the little photos together. Do you think she misses him? Uh, mm, she's married now, right? Or engaged. Engaged. But yeah. God, I don't want to be one of those people. It's like, oh my God, but they were so cute together. You're with someone for 10 years. True, but I mean, she, I think she's like a long term kind of girl because she, she was with Zach Efron for a long time too, right? So I think she's just like a long term kind of girly, yeah. And I think when you but, get to a certain age, because I think she's my age, I think you're just like you get engaged quicker because you're like, okay, like my time, you know, yeah. like let's get this going. If you want to get married and have kids, I guess, I don't know, yeah. But she seems like she wants to because she got engaged. Also, these shorts, skinny legend. Oh my god, you can fit Literally like a whole so, other person I know. in there. Okay, I'm a size 16 <laughs> and I bought a size 18, so I feel so skinny. Really, that guys, is a life hack. It buy really is. a size up. We were talking about this. I always bought a size down too, hoping I'd fit into it. I'd squeeze into it. It just does not look good. But if you buy a size up, you look so. I feel so skinny today. You, you could put on a belt and then you feel extra. Oh, skinny. It's yeah, like, okay, wow. well, I don't get crazy. I don't want to do a <laughs> belt situation. As soon as I eat, it's just like, and then I get that imprint of the belt. But man, I feel so skinny today. This is a great podcast because I just had a donut and coffee this morning and I feel great. My mom always brings donuts on my podcast day. She treats, she's like the crafty. She treats us like it's a set. <laughs> yeah, she's the best. We have the donuts, we have the coffee. It's It's a whole vibe. And I love it. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to like the hot, hot topics um, of all of this. Oh my god! Do we even want to give any any notice to Trace Cyrus? Trace Cyrus is trash. Should we drag him as, again? Yeah, he's literally. <laughs> <laughs> you dragged him on, I, on your own. Oh, I could have gone off more. I'm like trying to be. I was like. <sighs> Trey Cyrus, which like he did have a he had a band called Metro Station. I don't know if they're still around, but the, oh, that Metro was Station. his. I forgot yes. about that. Yeah, How yeah, I yeah. know. I think I told the story before. Miley Cyrus and her sister Noah came in with the mom Tish Cyrus. They came in to this place I worked when I was eighteen. It's called Neighborhoods in Hollywood and Highland. We made custom shirts. We could do it on demand. So they all came in. Miley was probably like fourteen, but like on Hannah Montana, she came in. I was like a fan already, and I was like, oh my god. So I made shirts for them, and they got the Metro Station, and I had to double up the letters. It was very, it was a lot, and it was very expensive because like double up the letters, you're do doing double. So I made the Metro Station shirts, and that's how I first knew about Trey Cyrus. And I was like, okay, vibe. We love that. The mom just got married. I love that all the kids were there. I was like, oh my god, supportive. We love that so much. I don't know anything about this person, but honestly, he annoys me more than anybody in the whole world like I cannot stand him first of all we don't drag for looks but also the way you look is so douchey you look like you're in 2009 like who are you to say anything about any OnlyFans sex workers when you look like that okay one two it's like you're 34 I thought maybe he was like younger like maybe he was like their younger brother for some reason I don't know I'm like maybe he's like younger or whatever like that basically he wrote the statement saying like OnlyFans girls, basically, no respectable guy is going to like you. Like, you are, like, basically trash. Like, no one's going to respect you, all this stuff like that. And I was just like, first of all, I have, like, the most respectable guy in the whole world who, like, loves me, adores me. Like, the best thing ever. Second of all, sex work, especially OnlyFans, is, like, so powerful, so liberating. All this stuff like that because the women are getting the money. The women are in control of their bodies. They get to make their money. They get to make a lot of money, not even leaving their house, not putting themselves in danger, not causing harm to literally anybody. The people who buy that are getting their, you know, sexual release in a very safe way. They're not harming other people. They're having this like consensual sexual exchange and I'm like who is this person to even say anything one it's like it makes me believe that he was rejected by an OnlyFans model or just women in general like he's giving major incel vibes and I was saying this he's like a danger to society these kind of people are the ones you need to watch out for the ones that hate these women so much and you don't even know them nothing even happened to you like this is the one that's going to go unleashed and he's already kind of unhinged on Twitter like we really do need to put a watch out for him because then on Twitter he was like oh my god I'm just saying all this stuff like it's the truth it's just like he's doubling down he's like I'm going to come back and troll people again it's like obviously he's not well he's 34 and he's like getting off on trolling on Twitter like they're or something not well he's getting excited about 10 million views like something's not well with this person and i know we don't ever should drag family into this because a lot of people are like miley and manoa and tish they probably have like no idea but they're obviously somewhat close they were all at the wedding they can say something like at this point if it was like my brother or sibling or someone saying this stuff like that like you have the voice miley is so like empowerment for like showing your body being sexual owning your sexuality i'm like why is no one stepping in or at least like saying like this isn't right i don't support this because this is looking like crazy problematic unhinged behavior and this is when i feel like those like holders should be put in orders like get this person help because something is seriously wrong with him and he's like doubling down on this and it makes me worried for like sex worker only fans girls out there so that's my take on trey cyrus thoughts it's so bizarre because like you said miley is very like sexually liberated and all about kind of like ownership of your body and like finds the empowerment in that so to have someone in her family be so opposite of that is so wild there is some weird stuff going on with her family right now like her siblings are like split up after like um her parents split up and each you know remarried um like some like i know noah and another one are like and her younger brother are like with billy ray and then miley and trace are like with 
Tish. But my but Noah was at the wedding, right? At Tish's wedding. I don't think I don't know if oh. Noah was. It's like there's there's a lot of weird stuff mm. going on with like the siblings and stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, but Trace yeah. and Miley are on the same side. Yeah. So Miley's and, the big one. And especially because Miley is usually I know she's like a little bit more low key after her divorce, but she usually is more like outspoken about this stuff. So I did find that like weird. And hopefully, I want to believe that she might if she saw it, she did something behind the scenes. But when but something's ab- above the scenes publicly, least, like, like publicly pu- say, say something. Say a statement that says that you you know I think you sh- it is worth like a statement publicly like this avowing that kind oh of, a thousand percent yeah. i would never talk to any of my siblings if they said anything like that about women and it is like it's weird because in the metro station days too like trace was so like he i don't know if you remember he was like so skinny no. and now seeing him now I, I feel like there has to be something psychologically because when you're yeah it's a you were so like so skinny now he like all his photos are like you know he's bulked up or whatever and he like tries to push that so yeah I, that also has to have some kind of psychological like alpha male kind of you know and probably the fact that he's like not successful like his sisters he's probably like damn yeah like i'm inferior to these women it's very odd and he's he's the oldest i don't know if yeah, he's 34. Older. yeah like, it screams weak insecure like any guy attacking a woman period is also, like weird but it's like also just why does everyone think and it's it's kind of like a general thing like why do the men think they have to like pipe up and like give their opinion on something that doesn't involve them at all at it's like oh like women being why? their most vulnerable yes they're killing it making money but you're still getting disrespected degraded humiliated people judge you for it whatever like that and you're at your most vulnerable shit and you're gonna like really that's been always been my issue i remember like i don't know two years ago it was like barstool sports or something which is maybe why i have a beef with. i actually like dave portner i don't know if he had anything to do with this but there was a video of barstool sports employees like making fun of my only fans it that, was like yeah. two girls and two guys and i'm like you are so disgusting and sick and twisted like no matter what no matter how much money i make no matter the choices i make putting stuff out it's like that's me at my like literal most vulnerable shit that's why i get pissed about anything naked nude any stuff like that like yes i put it out there and like that's how i make money because like it it just it's just how i make money like i don't know what else i would do without it but it's like so gross like you're already putting yourself out there you're already so vulnerable like obviously i already talk about so much about my insecurities with my body all stuff like that like i don't know what it is why people want to take that moment like there's so many things to critique me for and hate me for but you're going to take that like my naked body and like make fun of me like i just think that's like literally the scummiest of the scummy it's like so you're so bottom of the barrel shame on the women for doing that like that's so disgusting like anything like that's so gross but also like the men like how disgusting are you like how insecure like that screams insecurity when he's like no like strong man's gonna like this like it takes an even like it takes a strong woman to do only fans a stronger man or partner or woman to be with a like someone to be the partner of someone doing only fans because they will get critiqued i mean he gets sent my shit all the time like old shit all this stuff like that it's like literally so like it just it's just like one of the worst things and a lot of sex workers do you know can't if, if they don't get the traction or whatever the case is they decide they i know i know a porn star that stopped doing it and she her life got her mind her mental health just spiraled just was wrecked because now she thinks she did this horrible thing it's haunting her for the rest of her life like it's it's crazy. I think it's so disgusting. I think Trace is so disgusting. The fact that he's doubling down about it, the fact that he's like laughing about it, trolling about it, it's like so gross. Calling people ugly. He's like, oh, a lot of ugly people do OnlyFans. It's just like, what is your problem? Like, honestly, this is when I get mad. This is when I actually get triggered and I just have to like take a moment. But I was so annoyed. I just, I don't know. And they're and he's famous and he has these famous siblings. And why I was mildly not saying something. I'm sorry. Like at this point, like I know again not to put on siblings, but like if your sibling is misbehaving so bad and you stand for something so big, like I mean Miley should say something for sure. And I'm not someone to push someone to say something, but this is like your sibling. Like if it was someone I I promoted, right? My husband, my sister, or something, like you you have to say something. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I right? S- I don't know. Maybe am I wrong in that? Maybe I'm wrong on that one. I don't know. No, I personally, as someone who likes Miley and also is like a, Me a too. Great, you know, it's like and it's so opposite of what Trace is saying. It's like, I want her to like disavow it. So it's like validating almost, you know, because it's like she is the breadwinner of that family. Like she yeah. is the reason all the other we know of any of the other siblings at all. I feel like so when the second that like, she talks about it, then she is dragged. She's like lumped in with it, you know. So I do get why from like a professional standpoint, why she hasn't. It hasn't gotten Trace's statements haven't gotten like a ton of coverage. But the second she talks about it, right. it will. So it, yeah. not, it, it not only like amplifies what Trace is saying, but then it also like lumps Miley in with it. And I think that's another thing to think about, too. It's like all of a sudden he's going to get more promotion because people are going to talk about it. And then if you look it up, it's going to be Miley Cyrus and Trey Cyrus. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. When, it's, it, it's hard because it's like straight from the horse's mouth. I think it was like something oh, rumored or someone said this about him. Maybe, okay, wait to see what plays out. But it's like coming. I get that. I don't know. I just – yeah, I get that because I do hate when people push. It's like with the whole Colleen yeah. thing, like, well, her friends need to say something. It's like, okay, well, it's not really their place. It has nothing to do directly with them. So in that sense, but 
Yeah. yeah. I guess like you said, it's just more like as a fan, you're just like, God, I really wish she would say something against this because she's the only one that would have the power to like shut him up in some way. He would only really be r- rattled by Miley. You right. Know? Yeah. So, and I think she's the one that could like really shake the table. But in the more mainstream sense, like no one's really talked about it because like no one's really talking about Trace in general. So I also think like the less, like Miley not talking about it may also be good because it like, I don't want him to get any promotion. Though, yeah. You know? And I don't it was like all over my for you page like i don't follow him or anything and it was like all over my for you page and i was like what the hell? and like it made me so mad like i wanted to go off like on x but i just didn't i was like let me just save it for youtube i don't know i was so mad i don't know why that triggered me more than anything and i haven't been triggered in a long time i just like let me just call dr drew <laughs> let's evaluate this um but no, yeah. i don't blame you it's so misogynistic it's so annoying and like demeaning especially coming for, I just hate when like random men that like no one cares about decides to like post their whole manifesto as if their opinion like matters or like makes any difference. Like yeah. men need to realize their opinions on stuff, especially women's business. Like no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. No one asks. No it one cares. It doesn't change anyone's mind. It, no one's like happy for you for sharing no one is no happy one to have read it it's just like annoying and no one cares yeah it's like and then like people say well it's fine to have like a, of course it's fine to have a preference you don't want an only fans model fine like don't date them but like you don't have to like shit on the whole thing yeah like it's not like you're dating someone it's like unless he got like a bur- maybe someone he liked was an only fan so i don't know what happened to him he was something always triggered happened. by something he so, was triggered it was like a long <laughs> yeah, like a note <laughs> yeah it's like you what really was it to- on like instagram story or something <laughs> it was like, it's like a yeah, screenshot yeah. <laughs> no, it was like there's some app was graphic design was involved for, like <laughs> why yeah. it's such a loser behavior it was such a loser behavior, such loser like, behavior. instagram everyone who's on my side and x and no one's on my side like no one cares no one and we're no talking cares. about it but i'm just so mad but the fact that he was flexing 10 million views i'm like okay stop like that's so embarrassing it's 10 like, million views are people thinking that you're a shithead so yeah like no one 10 million people thinking you're an asshole yeah Congrats. i don't like it at all thoughts on dating a sex worker because <laughs> you met me like when i was first starting like when i was at the height when i was doing the craziest stuff on OnlyFans, we met as friends while we were dating well we dated and then we was like oh you're doing crazy stuff on OnlyFans," but you didn't yeah. like it you were like i don't want to date you because you're doing this stuff oh it was very clear well when we first met <laughs> you wanted me to join True. you i wanted you to like, know Let's do OnlyFans together, da da da. And I was like, no, I have a career. That's okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they were like, well, I want to do porn. I'm like, go ahead, you do it, but we're not going to be together. Yeah. You know? But to me, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, it's like, this is what you do for a living. This is what you did before we met. So my choice was, am I going to join you, you know, in this partnership and not change you? Yeah. Because, like, changing you is not an option. That's why That's why I'm here. I get that, too. Like, I don't think I could date an OnlyFans guy that was, like, sleeping with a bunch of girls. Like, I know it's their job, right? Like, that big one, Lena the Pug just did with it was Jason Love. Was that his name? Which I'm, like, I'm just finding out about him. But it's, like, I think he might be married. I don't know. But it's, like, I, even though I know it's, like, just work, I could never be with someone who's, like, having sex with different people. I know it's like a job. And trust me, when it comes to OnlyFans, I know it's a job. Like I, I did it for like a couple months of like hardcore stuff. And like, I mean, mine was a little different, I guess. I mean, mine, I, that's the thing about OnlyFans. It's like, you can kind of choose. It's not like you're partnered with, you know, you kind of choose. So it does become, for me, it was like, like enjoyable, you know, for like the moment or whatever. But I hadn't met Moses right when I was starting this and he just wanted to be my friend. So I was like, so like, it was weird. It was such a weird thing. Cause I was like enjoying it. But at the same time, I'm like, oh God, I really wanted to date him so bad. Like I was just like, why don't you take me seriously? Why don't you want to date me? And it was cause I was obviously I know you're having sex with other people so I get that aspect of it too of course like that's what I'm saying preference of course like if you don't want to date a girl because you don't want them to have sex with other people but I think there's categories like now obviously I don't like it since we started dating in August of 2021 I haven't but also like the way I looked at it was like I had sex with people too I just didn't film it right that's the only difference so sometimes people will wait you had sex with other people (laughs) <laughs> sometimes people Babe, try to show you be like divorce. oh what do you think about you know your wife I was like well your wife did too i just didn't see the movie of it you know what i mean right. like it's not that it didn't happen that's what or, i'm saying it's, it takes like a stronger person to date someone who does that on camera because like yeah like because it is on camera so it's like a different way of course everyone has sex with other well, people but you just don't know and if we go back to burning man i mean <laughs> everyone you know at the time when we first started going everyone was naked at burning man yeah so if we would all go, I would see everyone and their girlfriends, everyone were naked. Like nudity is not an issue for me. Yeah. And then if there's somebody that on their, you know, computer want to pay to see something behind paywall, it's their business. Mm-hmm. It's not really that 
public. You know what I mean? Like, so it, that's the interesting thing. Very few people come up to me in public. I think maybe one time someone came up to me and said they were an OnlyFans fan, but like very few people talk about it like publicly just in general. Not that I don't think there's anything ashamed of it. I always say this because like I love taking nude photos. I think like nudity is like so beautiful. And the fact that people do pay, I think that shows like the value. Like they value you. They value your art. They value your body and stuff like that. There's some girls who just do bikini stuff. I'm like, damn, I'm jealous of that. Like Tana doesn't show anything. I'm like, damn, like I was just making the money Tana was making just literally being in a bikini. But bodies are art and it's cool that like women and men can like make money off of it if they want and they don't feel bad about it and stuff like that so um that's why I was talking about Dr. Drew where I'm torn on like one hand like I love like the the nudity of it all I love that I think it's like super empowering I grew up with Playboy it's like my it's like my Playboy that I'm in charge of um you know again just like sometimes I go back and forth with it but whatever but yeah so you just you know you get stuff sent to you and then you're just that stuff bothers you more so when people send stuff to you I don't know well it's not that it's more I think which is actually against the against the guidelines of X and those kind of platforms is unsolicited nudity. Like, yeah. such if I write something on Twitter, somebody might comment to that with a nude photo. And I'm like, in this case, the only person that's doing something wrong is the person posting True. that and commenting. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that, that the people that hate on us or do that, they are the criminals. Yeah. This is pure harassment. This is revenge porn. This is all of those things. They're actually criminals. Well, that's what, what it comes down to. Wrong. But in general, the unsolicited sending people nude photos of anyone without their consent, whether they do it as they're living, they're full on mm-hmm. porn star or not, is like, th- that's where it's like legally wrong. Cause I think it is. I want to say I like researched some of the laws where it's almost like flashing. Like if you send someone unsolicited nudes, like it's considered like cyber flashing or something Aww. like that. Cause you can't just do that in real life. So it is a, it is a, that's like the down, the dark side and downside of it too is like people use it like against you or to weaponize. And like that's where it like feels a little icky. Yeah. yeah. But they're in the wrong. That's why it doesn't bother me. Like what you do doesn't bother me because you're not doing anything wrong. They're right. Doing it's this behind something. a paywall, consensual, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it does. It bums me out. That's why when this stuff happens with like a mainstream person and stuff like that, it just bums me out because there's already just such a bad stigma and you're like carried forever yeah. on that. You're judged for it forever. And like, again, I'm fortunate. Like that's my position and I can make a lot of money and I could like you know be fine or whatever or do other things like I have this now or whatever but you know some people they don't have that support they don't have that you know stability mentally or physically to like handle it or financially it bummed me out the Trey Cyrus one is really sad yeah it's also so interesting how like the stigma for women who choose to do OnlyFans it's so different from like the men mm. straight and gay like mm-hmm. I know for like the gay community specifically like OnlyFans guys it's almost like celebrated like it's like oh wow yeah. like you do only-. and then if someone like like hooks up with someone who's like an OnlyFans celeb or whatever it's like oh wow like, it's like legend yeah, almost of course, yeah. you know oh I see that all the time on my friend's stories when they go to like Mexico with like OnlyFans models and stuff like that like guys and like they're like, oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, it's like it's so weird how it's like a it's a, so celebrated for like in the gay community. And then when it comes to like straight men, like there's so many straight male like celebrities, influencers, where it's like no one throws it in their like, you know, Scotty Sire and like Toddy. Right. No one's like no one's like running around. Are you subscribed? And Wait. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, there is one of their friends is so hot. So for him, who? I would, what, uh-huh. who? Which one? <laughs> you said one of theirs. It's his name is Joe. Joe something. Joe. Yeah, he's like not. Re- I don't know what he does. Is he an influencer or not? No, I think he has like a normal job, but he like is with them a lot, and he oh. was uh, he was always really hot. But I think he just has a normal job or whatever. But he doesn't but do the OF. No, I don't think so. But it's funny, like no one, like you don't see T videos of like yeah like, people talking about throwing like Scotty and Toddy's like OnlyFans picks around. You know what I mean? I think I have it's an like, exception to that one in general. Like, like yeah, it's like, <laughs> it just. I'm There's sorry. No I know parties. we talk about it so much, but honestly, it's so. I don't know what it is. I'm telling you, I had to go to therapy about this. Like it, it actually is like so. Tr- like I can't process it. Like I can't process it. It's like so triggering. I don't know what. Like and every time it gets brought up in any situation, like even the soup video and stuff like that, I just am like, I don't know. It's. it's it's weird. So the reason I bring it up is because it's like always on the forefront of my mind and it like freaks me out. And I try to make like a joke about it, but it's just like, it yeah, freaks you know, me out. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. so freaky. And like, again, this person like in my house and like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm no. sorry. It gives me like, it, of all my things I've been through with any person in my life, a relationship like that is like literally the weirdest and it freaks me out so much. And it still freaks me out. Like, is she still like keeping tabs, like watching my things? Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. And it's and, like, when people say like, oh, Trisha said she would never talk about it again. Like you have a right to as someone who befriended someone, had a per- professional and personal relationship with someone and then found out that they were like weaponizing your most like vulnerable content against you mm-hmm. in a way to like poke fun 
at you and like what you do and your and like who and you just are. be mean just so. to be mean yeah and like it, was, it wasn't like poking fun like you're doing this behind like you're doing it on text messages to your fans like you're being so like vicious for what it's, yeah so i don't like that bad energy i had we saged it we saged that over there because we were trying to build another sound like we need to sage this energy out, yeah because that gave me such a weird feeling and let me tell you i was so sick during june i wasn't like i didn't have my periods so, like my hormones were off for like two months like there was some bad energy happening it was so weird and like i finally feel like i can like breathe or something it's really weird but yeah the, energy is real like the fact that this like every time like a only fans story kind of comes up you kind of get triggered like i feel like that makes sense that would mess anyone up yeah you know that's why i think the thing like jeff with david i don't i mean like any of those people adam with clean like it's like when you go through something so like traumatizing adam was like a child like you know i get it like i get why you would just want to keep talking about it and not let it go away because like it's something so you know jeff too it's like that situation is insane to me like it changed your whole life you can't see you look completely different like all this stuff like it's it's all it's all a lot, but <sighs> I love Miley. Trace is trash. <laughs> Put him in the trash. I general. do not believe in love anymore. There's something in the air. There's something in the air, guys. Divorces are happening all over Hollywood. What is it? What is happening in this year? Twenty twenty three year of the know. bunny. The bunny never my thing. <laughs> never I never met a bunny I liked. Do you know your year, your zodiac year? I am the mon- monkey. Okay. Is Thank monkey God. safe? Monkey safe. Everything's okay, cool. safe. You're the dog. Everything's safe. I'm dragon. He's snake. Everything. My daughter's a tiger. You're the bunny. I can't do it. We're almost out of it. February. <laughs> Everyone is breaking up. Everyone, Everyone is, is breaking, breaking up. up. Joe Jonas and Sophie, Sophie Turner, Turner have been together, what, since 2017? Like, almost six years. Yeah. I always thought they were really cute together. I really did. So cute. Their little Vegas wedding was a vibe. Like, yeah. everything about them was so cute. Supposedly, they've been separated for six months. But they, but then Sophie Turner posted her with Nick Jonas. Er, Joe. Joe Jonas. Yeah. Everyone is like, why can't it be Nick? <laughs> I guess oh, everyone. Yeah. Do they people, just thirst after him or they just don't like Priyanka? I don't. I think people don't like Priyanka. Why is that? Okay, I, I don't know don't. anything about her, but is it just because she's with Nick or is it, does she, did, did she? As far as I know, she hasn't done anything like super problematic, I think. I don't right, know I don't why think so people, either. Yeah. I don't know why people just don't like her. Maybe, you know, there is some people, it's like Meghan Markle that just people don't like people for like some reason. The wrong way. Yeah. Hilaria Baldwin. Like yeah, there's so yeah. much hate against her. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like for what? I, I know nothing about Priyanka. But I was just like, maybe because she married Nick Jonas. I saw the other meme of like, why everyone is divorcing. Why can't it be? There's a Aaron young Taylor guy. Taylor Johnson. You know, yeah. With the girl, with the <laughs> yeah. older woman. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forgot her name, but she's like a director. She, <laughs> people, a lot of people think that she allegedly, oh, Sam Taylor Johnson. Yeah. Oh. A lot of people think she, because the age difference is so big. So a lot of people think she allegedly. <gasps> groom oh, him I, yeah. I didn't know was that was he like a minor when she met him i forget the history of there i think maybe he was he might have been like 17 or 18 i think when they because he's still really young and she's an older like i think she was a director or film executive something like that she's a director i think oh, yeah. she directed him in a movie when she was young maybe yeah, something like that so yeah and uh, people hate really, her yeah well that makes more sense because that's ick she like talked about in an interview kind of recently about how he is like a uh, being the father dynamic and the her daughter slash his stepdaughter is only like a couple years younger than him, like two or three ish years younger. And than what him. did she say about it? Has she said anything? No, um, Sam, the wife or the, the daughter? daughter? No, I don't think she said anything. So what is he? He talks about well, how, how does he even talk about being a parent when you're like if they're the same age or both adults? Yeah, how are you, that's like, what a parent? everyone was yeah. like quote tweeting it, being like, "This is really weird." Yeah, you're like <laughs> an adult with an adult stepchild. Like, no, I think eighteen even is like that's what I'm saying. Even if you're like legal eighteen, nineteen, it's still ick. Like they're still a teenager, you know. Like in your, I don't know how old she is. She's still, what like fifty? Because everyone I and mean, they really don't yeah. like her. Twitter, they call her like a no, witch they and stuff her all the time, especially because he's like, uh, is he hot? I don't he's even know. really hot. Yeah, uh, okay. It's yeah, everyone loves him. Everyone's like, why can't it be this person? <laughs> Ariana Grande, go find, go do a movie with this guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry, that's it. Like J Lo and Casper. Like if you're like in your 30s and you're dating someone 50 or 60, I guess more power to you, whatever. But when you're like a he's young, a 23 and- year difference between the two. He's 33, she's 56. Oh, but did they? Did it say how long they've been married for? Okay, Let that's not see. like bad unless they met when they were young or something that's not bad they married in 2008 yeah, that's when they started dating yeah they met in 2008 god i'm so bad with the math oh yeah when he auditioned to be in sam's movie so he was he 18. was 18 he was 18 or 17 yeah don't like it yeah yeah Thank you, next. Ariana, get him. <laughs> Ariana, go find them, please. <laughs> I'll be in please. that movie. Yeah, everyone's like, why can't it be them? I agree with that. That's really ick. Yeah. Um, yeah, it makes me sad. Sophie Turner, I want to say follow me one time on my old Instagram. My Instagram deleted. Yeah, she followed me. Oh, my God. It was That's my base flex. I know. I really wanted to be friends with her. I was in a Game of Thrones era, for sure. Did you yeah. have a face? 
a Game of Thrones phase. Oh yeah, of course. That, especially that first season. That's when I was like really. I kind of fell off towards like the end. Oh yeah, I fell off, but, and then I came back for the last season, and it was yeah. a little trash. But I don't want to be that person that's like, oh, everyone jumped on that bandwagon of it being trash, but it kind of was. Like, yeah. The deaths were so bad. Yeah, they, they, really, so they lost iconic. the plot literally. Literally, literally. <laughs> I think they would agree <laughs> they, they lost, lost the plot. plot. Like, uh yeah. So do we know? Oh, the thing that bothered me with the Joe yes, Jonas, you I know, know. we're going to agree. Okay. Yeah. Did I tweet about it or no? No, I just know what you're going to okay, say. Okay, I love that you know. <laughs> I love that you know was the fact that they were like, oh, Joe is taking care of the kids like yeah. full time with Sophie. Yeah. I'm like, okay, first of all, being a dad. Literally just being a father. Yeah. Being a father. But two, I'm also like, that's kind of a weird thing to say when you're in the middle of this like world tour because it's like, there's no way you're full time with the kids. Like, you know what I mean? There's just, it's impossible if you're on stage at night, like to be full time with them. Like, that's just not possible, not realistic. And it's like a weird thing to say. So everyone is just like, what's the real tea? Why is Joe Jonas flexing this? Like, why is he saying this? Like, yeah. is there something like brewing? Like, there's nothing that's been talked about right now, right? That no, separation. it's been like, that's why it's been like very surprising because everyone, usually you kind of get like the whispers first right but this one came out like so out of left field um but yeah the tmz information was just so like pro jonas <laughs> so <laughs> and everyone's saying well okay this is like the first time sophie has worked since she's literally shooting uh in england she's shooting a project so this and this is the first like project she's shot since you know motherhood right so it's like the first time she's also been away you know from the kids because she's working oh did they say that he's doing it by himself i thought i said he was doing it with her no they're, they're saying like he has doing it basically insinuating that he's doing it by himself yeah Which is, like not true yeah so okay, it's the I first just... time she's been like been away from like the family and stuff meanwhile like joe sophie's been in like the music videos she's followed them on tour before yeah. so it's like come on what is that that's so weird it's i wonder very, i don't know and they have two kids two yeah hmm yeah that statement was odd that like definitely rubbed me the wrong way i was just like why like everyone was saying like why are we giving guys like this praise to be like the bare minimum it's like so weird like yeah you should be raising your kids just like you know it's like it bothers me so much again back to us it's like it's bothers me so much when like most raising Mel was like yes he's the father we're raising That's her together yeah. yeah like it's it it bothers me to no end when people say that it's so weird so i don't like that and then it's like they get praised for doing so much meanwhile the moms are doing like everything mm-hmm. but um, but I also don't buy that he's like doing it all by himself. I mean, he's on tour. Like someone's got to be watching yeah, these kids. Yeah, it's just impossible because you're doing promo. They're doing TikToks with everybody in the world. All the Jonas Brothers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Kevin Jonas was not on the last two episodes of Claim to Fame. I'm like, what were you doing, Kevin? You were not on tour yet. Like, I love that show. But um, yeah, hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. I, I don't know. know if I care that much, but I'm not really. I was never Jonas. It's weird because I was such a Disney like girly, but I never was like a Joe Bros. Like I never was no. a Joe Bros. I was always like a like when Miley went and, and Selena were fighting over Nick. Like I oh I, I don't remember. You that don't at remember all. That? No. that? Were they actually? Yeah, like they had a feud for a long time because they were fighting over Nick Jonas. Oh my god. Um, but uh, I was very in that era of Disney, but never a Joe Bro girly. Never yeah. a JB. Camp Rock, not it. Although no. I love this is me and that's like the time. <laughs> I was just singing that, Do you song. Love that song. I love this that song. This is real. This, this is me. me. I'm exactly <laughs> where I'm supposed, supposed to be. Are you Joe now. Jonas right now or are you Demi? Are we both Demi? I'm, we're both Demi. I'm okay. not <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Shane. Let the light. Oh yeah, Shane. He comes in. Shine <laughs> on me. Now I found who I am. There's, There's no way to hold it in. No more hiding who I want to be. And this, this is me. me. And I think that's when Joe Jonas comes yeah. in. You're the voice I see in the summertime. The reason that I'm singing. Need to find you. I gotta find you. Should I go? Yeah, there's more? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot Does more. Does Demi go? <laughs> no, I always want Moses shit. to do that TikTok with me. It's like, you, me, do you know what? We're face to face. See eye to eye. We're like fire and rain. Fire and rain. And then the same. Is that Camp Rock? Yeah, I think maybe Camp Rock too. Man, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Mm. Camp Rock too. Yeah, there is a Camp Rock too. Sequel. Yeah. We should get Allison Stoner on the podcast. She has her own podcast yeah. now where she's like so like anti anybody being a child star, which is so interesting. Because when I ask child stars about it, they all of them seem to be like, yeah, I'd let my kid do it kind of thing. But she's just like, do not let your kids do this. Like, very. Uh, yeah, I guess it kind of depends on the experience you, you, like child stars have, maybe. But, but also, she was like, like an the everything. Disney machine. Yeah, it can be kind of like. Miley was talking about like her. She was like, did you see this video where she was reading her schedule when she was a kid? Like, when she was 14 years old? She, oh, yeah. Yeah, I she was like one. reading what her schedule would be. And she like, wake up at 5 a.m. And then um, hair and makeup at 6 a.m., interview at 8 a.m., interview at 9 15 a.m. And then and she didn't finish from like, so from like 5 a.m. to like 7 p.m., she was working at like 14 years old. So I can imagine right. why someone would be like opposed well, to that. Well, I think 14, maybe, I don't know, maybe 14, you have a little more like 
say, I would assume, to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Right? I don't know. Especially, like, back then. Like, think about, you like, think- every kid, like, it was the dream to be on Disney, Disney Channel. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I feel like you're very, like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of just do it because it's, like, you know, especially if your parents are kind of, like, pushing you to That's be involved true. in it. You know? So, she, is she kind of saying she didn't enjoy it, Miley? Or is she just she saying She was just saying busy? how now she's, like, she gives herself time to, like, be on long breaks because she was like forced to work so much when or was working so much when yeah. she was younger like it was like non-stop hustling when you're like a kid so now she is giving herself the grace to like go on vacations yeah. and like you know take breaks from like the spotlight and stuff so yeah that's interesting because yeah. i like don't know i mean i always wanted to do that i always wanted to be like Me an too. actor or something as a child it been like the dream but i get it i don't know it's so hard it's so hard because i really really wanted to be a child actor i would like audition like well fake auditions i was like <laughs> at the mall but i still wanted it so bad but i guess when you have it i mean i guess the, it's just the grass is greener on the other side always mm-hmm. like you just like what whatever you have you like don't you know want yeah but back to joe and Sophie. No, yeah. <laughs> we're not <laughs> I mean, yeah i know i'm just not i don't just care I, that not much. is there a couple a celebrity couple that would like really shake you to the core if they split for me i think mm. it's i think tom holland and zendaya i really like together oh but they're not like heavy are they like they're not married no but they've been together for like, years and they're but so they're cute young, together. So I'm like, whenever they're young, I'm just like, oh, they're going to break up. Like, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds then would be like my... Oh, I didn't even know they were married. Blake Lively and Ryan the girl Reynolds. The Gossip Girl? Good for her. How'd she find <laughs> they him? They have like four kids. What? Yeah. They've been married for like the years. Oh my God. When did that happen? They met on like the Green Lantern movie. This was like 20... Never uh, heard of it. So I, was, I don't know, a long time ago. I don't know what that is. Oh my God. <laughs> I, you didn't know Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Before. I did not even know... I heard of Blake Lively didn't know where she was from and then when I saw her in Gossip Girl I was like oh like I always see her at like the Met and I was like okay like <laughs> right I don't know yeah. I guess I knew they were dating I don't know I don't know maybe I didn't I have no idea so what couple would like really shake you mm-hmm. no one <laughs> Brittany and Sam I was shook by that, that. Was, like, I was like wait I really thought that was like they've been together so long Brittany and Sam oh, god everyone is like I don't know. Is there someone like I love? Gerard Way and his wife, although she's not like famous. I guess but... maybe Adam Sandler and his wife. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> then you really stop believing in love. I feel like, yeah, when people – I just think you need to stay together with whoever you're with. Just stay together. Unless it's abusive or something, then leave. But I just feel like – like, what do you do? Who was it? Oh, Ned Fulmer and his wife. Like, she's just like, ah, we have kids together. I don't know. It's just hard. I don't know. It's a tough one. I just think like we're like old. Like who are we gonna find in our old in our prehistoric age? Like who are we gonna find? You know? Yeah. Like are you gonna leave me and find someone better? You know? I'm I not was find thinking someone about better. that because I was like I, I don't know why I was like reflecting on like um, era of like dating and it was so draining to like date and I couldn't imagine doing it. Like it's just no. I remember just like going out and like I, I was in that phase where it's like i would say yes like every day because i was like you never even if i didn't like feel it yeah. i was like you never know you this never could know. be the one so yes. i would say yes to every day and it was like <gasps> it was so exhausting because every day you have the same conversations mm. you make the same small talk you say you make the same jokes and it's like it all blurs together i'm like this totally terrible, like, no low-key. it was horrible like literally so bad we went out to dinner with tana and all her like friends they're all like 25 they're all very nice people and they were talking they're talking about the dating apps they're all on these dating apps like there's like a jewish dating app what was that one where it's like you you don't have to be Jewish, but the men are Jewish because now with Elliot Grange and all the Jewish Lux? men taking over, what Lux? was it? Lux. Lux. Can we like? be sponsored by Lux? <laughs> Apparently, it's a Jewish dating app, which I wish I would have known. Where you, because JD, you both have to be Jewish, but Lux, um, only the guy is Jewish, and I guess the. And, I guess for girls that want to find Jewish guys. Yeah, is that which it? is everything. I was like, I guess and guys, I guess too. I don't know yeah. because we found out like she had so many Jewish friends. We loved it. I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, love that. Um, but they were talking about this Lux to find like these Jewish guys. And, um, anyways, they're talking about the apps in general, like Hinge and all stuff. Like, I'm like, sounds so exhausting. Like, Tana, we, we were like 10 o'clock, 10 30. We were like at Buffalo Wild and she was going to go on a date afterwards. I was like, oh my gosh. And then they talk about like dating the same people or the whatever. I don't know if Brooke mentioned on the cancel. I didn't watch it if she left it or not. We won't say who, but she went on a date with a celebrity. Oh, an older celebrity. She didn't know it was a date. I don't know if she talked about this or not. But, anyways, it was such an interesting story. I wish she would have kept it in. But it's like crazy. I was like, and she's like, oh, we went to dinner. Like, I don't know. I don't want to say the whole thing, but like just the dating in general, exhausting dating the same people, like coming over to your house, going over to their house. Is it too late is it just a hookup like oh you really like the person but they don't like you back like dating i would never date i would never date again if something happens to moses i'm just done for a while <laughs> i'm just done for a while and like i, I don't know unless tim allen maybe you know if he was widowed too and then we're both widowed and then whatever but um 
no, not even Tim Allen. I wouldn't leave. Like, literally nobody would tempt me. Like, not Jason Momoa, not Naveen Andrews, not Gerard Way. Not even Tim Allen. I love Tim Allen. But um, I don't know. I just, it's just so exhausting. I remember sometimes I'd feel empowered. I was like, oh, like it's so, to be like in demand enough to get on dates. But then like. It was, <laughs> I was never in demand <laughs> on dates. That's it was like, sure. uh, like my little skinny era. I was like, wow. Like, I could really, oh. it was like different day every day. Right. And it felt so good. But then also to be like, it was so draining. And then not knowing. Oh, then sometimes you would get like, you would leave like, wow, what a great day. And then not never get a text <gasps> back. That, that happened to me humbling. so much. Very humbling. So humbling. Oh my God. The worst. That happened to me a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think if I was skinny. Yeah, maybe it'd totally be a different world. Like, me dating skinny, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I want to get skinny. I don't know the power I would hold yeah, as a skinny funny. queen. But um, but also not eating before a date. Like, I would just, like, starve oh my myself. God, yeah. I'm like, this will I'll look skinnier if I don't eat or whatever. Which, you know, is kind of true. People are like, no, it's not true. But it is. Like, if you just don't eat before a date, you're going to look skinnier. But I don't. I know when I met him, I was actually, I was, like, so skinny, actually, back then. I was like, oh, my God, I wish I was that little now. I mean, not skinny, but I was, like, definitely under 200 pounds. And I was like, damn. But, um, yeah, I don't miss any of that. Or just, like, the eating habits. Just anything. When when you're mentally ill, like having them discover that for the first time, oh like God, it's a whole yeah. thing. Because you can't just say it right off the bat; they're gonna be scared, and so then you have to like, then they get introduced to it, and then it's just, it's just a whole thing. It's just a lot. Also, you can't. I've never been able to eat comfortably in front of anyone before Moses. So like eating spaghetti, all that stuff like that. Like I just couldn't. It's my favorite meal. I couldn't <laughs> do bolognese with somebody. You know what I mean? Because they would just definitely judge me. When we eat, we eat on the couch and trays, and we don't. I don't have them look at me. I'm always like this, and I just shovel it in my mouth. <laughs> I guess sometimes you see me shovel it in my mouth. I cut it off with my teeth and then let it drop, which That's is crazy. Cute. Oh. We had an argument. Oh my god, we had an argument speaking of pasta. Let's just talk about this on our walk yesterday. We've been going on walks, and um, I don't know how I got brought up. We're talking about oh, like you make bolognese and you love it. I'm like, oh, that's so interesting because you don't like pasta. And he's like, no, I like pasta. I just try not to eat it, you know, too much for like weight gain or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, well, because I do make pasta more than him. And I'm like, well, you know, I can eat pasta and I don't, I don't need the butter on it. Like, you know, I just you know put a little Parmesan cheese and that's good because sometimes I do the butter and everything, the garlic. And he's like, well, it's not the butter that's the issue. It's the pasta. And I was like. I got so mad at him. I'm mean, no, it's not. Like, if you have noodles or noodles with butter, the noodles with butter is clearly worse. And he's trying to tell me, no, it's the pasta that makes you fat and not the butter. I was like, no. I mean, I get it. Pasta can make you fattening. But, like, the butter adds. It's like popcorn without butter. Like, the popcorn without butter is healthier than popcorn with butter. The carbs are in the pasta. Thoughts? Oscar? See, I think if you walk, because you, your body does like need carbs. So it's like mm -hmm. if those are the only carbs you're having, especially, right? Look, literally, what other carbs do I eat besides pasta? Nothing. You just eat pasta. Exactly. Okay, like you do need, like your body pasta. does need some carbs, especially if like after cardio, you do need carbs. Yeah, we've so been walking, doing it. Yeah. And there's a lot of times I like, usually when I have pasta, it's like, you know, to settle my stomach. Like a lot of times I'll just eat pasta because like, I'll be, oh, I had fried food. Like we had a fried fish and chips. It's like, oh, I kind of just want pasta because it just like settles my stomach. Yeah. There is a life hack because I'm also very like carby, carby girl. <laughs> we love a carby. <laughs> carby girl. Um, <laughs> You're going to hate it, I know. But there's, like, the zucchini. <laughs> no, like, no, I know. immediately no. But it comes, no. like, pre- I, that. I buy it, like, pre- Like, at Trader Joe's, like, pre-packaged. Is it, like, wet? If you put yes. the sauce. Oh, yeah, but you're not, like, saucy, girl. That's what, yeah, not yeah, yeah. I like just plain penne pasta. But my other, life ha my other skinny hack is the spray. Like, you know, the pan, like, the butter spray. It's zero calories. So if you just want the taste of butter with zero calories. But I'm fine without butter. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that healthier? <laughs> that's healthier yeah. than with butter. Yeah, without... Yeah, of course. I can just eat it plain, and I will eat a dry pasta all day long. Like, I never did butter noodles until, like, a few years ago. I didn't even know butter was put on noodles. And I'm like, yeah, it's tasty, <laughs> but I'm fine without the butter. So there's nights where I'll just be like, I don't need the butter on it. I'm just going to do cheese on like, a little bit of cheese or whatever. And he was trying to tell me that's not the issue. It's the pasta. I'm like, but it is. If I'm eating dry pasta, that's healthier than eating buttered pasta. I didn't think there was any argument about that. <laughs> <laughs> there what? Are you no. kidding me? That was the whole thing. You're like, no, what? And then you were doing the laugh, like... This laugh again that I yelled at him for. I'm like, that's a condescending laugh. He's like, oh my god, you think you think plain noodles is better than butter noodles? And I was like, oh no, that you're was so not. dumb right now. That was not. I didn't call him dumb in the moment, but that's what I, I, I was in silence the rest of the walk. I was like, I wanted to say something. I wanted to fight back. I was like, okay, Mister Healthy, yes, you eat salmon and poke bowls, but then you have a coke right after and an ice cream bar. I'm like, does that make it any better? Like that's why I was like, what? I didn't know you had this judgment about me eating pasta. I was just like, what the no. heck? Like, first of all, no, I think you. You confuse my laughter with condescending because I'm not, I'm not a condescending person. Like I don't, you know what I mean. Like in that conversation, mm -hmm. doesn't, I'm not condescending. A little bit. You I were was, like, was, uh -huh, was, you think that's, no, you think that's caught, the problem? You I were. I was caught off guard 
Because I thought you what you said. You stopped laughing right away. You're like, and he was sweet about it. He's no, like, no, no, but no, I wasn't. thought what you said was that the carbs are not in the pasta, that the carbs are only in the butter. That's not what I was saying. I'm saying it's healthier That's, to not have the buttered pasta. Right, rather but I didn't plain. hear that. No, but you said the issue is not. Because I'm like, oh, I'm fine not having butter with it. You're like, that's not the issue. The issue is the pasta. I'm like, is that the issue? I don't know. Right. So what I said was I would eat pasta maybe once a week because that's for me manageable. But if I eat it every day, I'll gain weight. So the issue of butter wasn't even in my mind. It was more about <laughs> how many times I eat pasta in a week. But then, but like having like a soda like and like I chocolate love, after. That's you think a different that's, conversation. But do you think that's better than having my noodles? Like I just have noodles and no dessert? No, because that wasn't a conversation. <laughs> well, I was all. a little judgy to be like, well, no. I only have pasta because I don't want to get weight. I'm like, well, that's why I don't want a dessert every time. Because he'll bring me ice cream. I'm like, I don't want a dessert every time because I'd rather have pasta than... <laughs> and I'm sorry, I think the majority of people would agree that pasta is better than having coconut ice cream. Not that I judge you. Have whatever. I fucking... I eat the butter, right. the noodles all day long, but exactly. I didn't know so that, if we're passing judgment choice. against our eating habits over but here. But it wasn't judgment. It was talking about what has carbs. I don't know. Like. It was the second time you brought up me eating pasta. <laughs> you brought it up. There was another, no, there was another one. Uh, last week's Hot Topics, you're like, you eat pasta. I was like, oh, damn, okay. No, you ask me what it is because you actually do eat healthy. I don't eat that much pasta. I have like two pastas a week. I mean, I don't all eat that much. Like, and I do, just plain. You do eat healthy. You actually, well, I don't know if I eat healthy. I definitely don't no, eat you healthy. Do. You I do. Don't, you don't. Wait, what do I eat that's healthy? No, because you don't eat a lot of processed food. You actually don't eat fast food. That doesn't mean food. it's not healthy, though. Like lasagna. He's trying to tell me lasagna is healthy. He's like, lasagna is actually pretty think, healthy. I'm like, I don't think that's healthy. I think anything we cook at home is healthy. Like we cook it it's ourselves. It's not processed, but it's that doesn't mean exactly. it's healthy. Exactly. <laughs> but that's a hundred times better than processed food. I don't food. know. We have ricotta, mozzarella, and parmesan in our ground beef <laughs> tomato yeah, crust. I don't, think, I don't think those cheeses are a problem. With big ass noodles. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, if I eat a lot of pasta and bread, I feel bloated. Like that's what well, makes I it. Well, I drink a lot of Coca Cola. I feel bloated. So. Right. That's why I have the mini cokes. <laughs> he had it on our walk. I was like, I almost snapped back. I didn't. I had to stay in was silence. So I almost that been day. like, well, you think walking and having a soda is healthier? Like. It was so hot and I was thirsty. <laughs> I mean, most people bring waters on their walk, but I stayed cool. I was like, let me not. I was, I was ready to have that rebuttal, but I was like, let me not. Uh, I love fights like that, though. Like, they're like, <laughs> in, in the moment, you're like, so easy. But then when you look back on it, it was like, oh, that's kind of funny. I like, know, I know. That's well, like, I can bring it up now because it is that's like the difference. so stupid. I didn't even know we were having a fight or anything. I thought <laughs> oh, we were just talking about true. carbs. That's not true. We were, we were the just rest talking of about it. carbs, but then suddenly you were like, whoa. I've been having such good vibes lately, though, so that's why I was like, let me just flip this around because Keep the vibes moving. have been so good he's been so good like everything he does is like amazing and he is so sweet and wonderful so i was like let me just like not take this so sensitively i just was like that doesn't make any sense like noodles without butter is healthier than noodles with butter true period but then okay well that's all i was trying to have you say and you were trying to be like no the pasta is the issue well i was just talking about how many times all right no butter is healthier pasta. than a buttered option i'll get that butter popcorn all day long and i'll get sick every single time every time i come home from the movies i'm so nauseous i don't know what it is about that butter and I always put yeah. it on every single time. That butter is really bad. Mm, yeah. It's so good, though. <sighs> Being fat is not fun. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But also, like, like I said, I really don't care until like I stop to think about it or something. Then it's like, okay, I don't know. To me, I don't feel it. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't really. Sometimes I feel it. But we have a lot of stairs. But <laughs> I love to eat. BB Rexa just did an interview. Um... Oh, on the Jennifer Hudson show. And she was just like, it's 2023. Why are we body shaming? And she goes, I just like to eat. And like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I'm like, yes, girl. That's how I feel. BB Rexa is a queen. I know. And then I saw this like Instagram from, because I follow like fitness people to like, you know, for gym stuff. And then it was like, you need to train your mind to not think of food as food pleasure but as survival and oh, i was like i can literally no. you would have to like hit me over the head with like a freaking crane yeah like give me a lobotomy give yeah, me another person's brain literally that's yeah. the only way i think i could i uh, know i don't like yeah to me honestly i really do love food i it's like it's such a pleasure and it's like yes maybe i should restrict it a little bit but i just love it so much whenever and that's like one thing we do have in common when we make this lasagna it's like so good like we're just like so decadent and when he makes me my, these breakfast wraps like it's just so good i don't know what it is we had masters last night we had mac and cheese and it was just like we just bonded over it like this is so good <laughs> so yummy. And before he met me, he was just like, you know, honestly, like I just, you know, didn't like care to eat. Like he just didn't eat. I don't know. Was it because you just didn't want it or you didn't like it or what? Or did I, is it true what everyone says? I just made you eat. <laughs> no, I think as a single person, it's very different. Cause yeah. mm. like I wouldn't cook for one person, like the going to get groceries, cooking all that for one person doesn't make sense. Yeah. But when there's more people enjoying it. But you only had like one meal a day when I met you, you were only like dinner or something. No, I think there were, there were times, there were times where I would work all day, get a big lunch towards dinner. Like, you know, it, it's more about convenience. You were very thin when I but, met you. Yeah, like, I was not. Your wrists were. Eating enough. I love you like this. 
You look good. I think you look amazing. I think you look good. He is lucky. I mean, he does. He does eat healthy. He does eat like for lunches and stuff like that. He always eats healthy. Like his only ha- bad habit is like maybe a coke every night, which isn't the worst. Also, live your no. life. Who cares? Like I like <laughs> you know what I mean. I literally never think anything of it. I, I just wish it was sugar me. Sugar is fine. I wish I could have. I always I was at the Sprite Cranberry, and that's when I was gaining weight in Christmas time. So it's really just jealousy that you get to have it. Or he'll bring <laughs> ice cream for me, and it's so sweet. And the to have to say no is like it breaks my heart because I'm like I really do want this, but that's just more calories and sugar yeah. that I don't need on top of my lasagna, on top of my butter noodles. And I'm someone who doesn't have like too much of a sweet tooth. Like I like dessert, oh, but I'm lucky. not. Yeah, I'm such do you a have sweet a sweet tooth? tooth? So bad. Yeah, he likes. So he has to have bad. candy every night or something me like too. that. I need a little sweet after dinner. It's I'm good. Like, I like it, but uh, I don't like, crave yeah. it. Oh, All right. Yes. Do you go, care yes. about other couples? New. Speaking of Joe and yeah. Sophie, Tana um, had teased that this was the breakup that was really gonna like shake the Tana, internet. Tana, where did she tease this? That, Teasing everything. She teased on the po- weeks ago, like on the podcast, uncancelled. Um, that. This would be the breakup that would break the internet. And it was. Wait, really? Yeah. She said. Soft launching a breakup? <laughs> she's soft, she's soft launching a Was break. that her break? No, she's not dating anyone. No. Oh. So, um, Toddy and Natalie from the vlog squad have Nobody allegedly broken up. <laughs> Literally, who even who even knew Todd back then? Like, was he even making content? Does he make content? Literally, what does he do? So boring, both of them. But yes, what they broke up? Boo-hoo. They allegedly yeah, not the breakup up. of the century. Sorry, love Tana, but I no. Know, I don't know why she was teasing. Was that, like that sure part. that was the one she was talking about? People were like, "Wait, does she mean Joe and So? Like, does she know about Joe and Sophie?" Maybe she did. I'm gonna say that, I'm, giving her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> There's no reach way. out for a statement, but <laughs> I didn't know they were dating. Didn't know they broke up. Don't care about literally either of them. Uh, well, another vlog squad news david wants to have a <laughs> reality show do you care about that no his other one got canceled why are they giving him a reality show seriously youtubers need not reality shows every <laughs> single time they get one they get canceled and no offense to them like whatever like grace helpick had one on e and stuff like that it just gets canceled oh, right away that. you know what i mean and like yeah. no offense like it's honestly like i probably get canceled too hence why i'm like doing this in my basement like i don't even have a tv show so no good for can, you yeah, no yeah. Um, although we know an off. israeli tv show coming out on israel tv if you speak hebrew <laughs> comes out on reshet this fall but um i'm not even the star moses is. he was like on the cover which is a flex honestly Honestly, I was like, okay, but, um, yes. Okay. David, oh, he had a reality show on discovery. Oh, oh yeah. It was like a travel thing. Was it a travel show? I mean, I think. How, how he got that? I have no idea. He wants it to be about dough bricks, like the pizza no. shop with like the employees. It's like laundering stuff. money. I feel allegedly <laughs> like nobody's going to Dobrik pizza for the pizza. Like Dave Porno, who we're going to talk about in a minute, but like he does pizza reviews. He's like, this is like, it's not it. I had it. Well, I had it for oh, a, a video Trey. though. For, you love David though, huh? Joey, you have a soft spot for him. Um, Joey, it was. Oh, we also did like Trish Scan. It was like he did like a old, like trying influencer thing. He tried my product. Yeah, love that. And what do so, you say about it? Um, he actually really he loved it. Actually. It's actually really good. Yeah. Did you pick it up? Yeah. Did you text yeah, me? Yeah, oh, that yeah. Was one, yeah. No, the lady who makes. I'm telling you, I'm not just saying this because like she has a bunch of products that work great, but like Trish Scan is really the best. I mean, I, I use it every single day. But yeah, I still use it. It's good. It's still yeah. available on Amazon. Go get it. Um, <laughs> but he also tried the the P- Dobrik's pizza. I liked it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did enjoy the pizza. Mm. I couldn't help it. It was expensive though, so and you have to go all the way to West Hollywood, so that's why I only had that. Like one location time, is great, but like, who's doing the reality show? Who's the production company? It's just like a, his scheme right now. Who, or, how do you know about this? Are you following I read him? It, uh, no, I read it. You're I following was, his Snapchat stories. <laughs> I was researching, but yeah, I did have a side. So I, I don't. You just think he's cute? No, not me. <laughs> Back in the day, I did like in his heyday but right. then after like everything catches up to you apart, the looks wise if you're not a good person it's gonna catch up to you after everything fell apart yeah i haven't been able to feel the same about him since but it's yeah bad it's now. weird though because he's still like very despite like not being on youtube like that's why i think we're talking about like if he's canceled or not i think it was, I think it was on, on canceled but yeah <laughs> um yeah because he still was like very popular you know so yeah it's very weird speaking of canceled <laughs> your pot I have to tell you, I didn't forgot to tell you when the little dog ran out and you screamed. I said that First of all, that was terrifying. First of all, <laughs> the Tana experience is wild. Okay. First thing, when there's a lot of people around, I'm not good. Like, immediately, I'm just like, and, and she brings an audience, like, at Just Trish audience, which I love. There was, like, three, and I knew all them. Like, I was like, okay, Paige and Alexis and Amari. Love all of them. And I love all her friends. Truly, truly, truly. They're, like, that little squad over there was great. Like, Amari, literally the sweetest person ever. Like, I like when people talk to everyone. We talk about this, like, you know, if, if you're, like, the main person, right, and they only want to talk to you and not whatever. Like, I like that they want to talk to everyone. Like, Moses, all stuff like that. So, like, he was having conversations with all of them. I, I love that about people. And I'm the same way. I'm very much the same way. I want to talk to every single person. I don't care. You know, I love Tana, but I love everyone else. Trevi was there. There was, it was really. Oh, Trevi was there too. Yeah, she was like, I haven't seen her in so long. It was so good. I want to have her on the podcast. Of course, I love Lila. Like, I know all these people. And then there were some I didn't know too. There's an, oh, there's another guy I love too. I can't think of his name. But, um, 
It was a vibe for sure, but there's just, it's so much chaos. It's so much chaos happening because it's like, so when I saw, like, it would make sense, not that it's like their house, but I, we have mice in our house. I'm like, whatever, we're in a mountain, you know, you just get mice, whatever. So I hate mice. He can tell you that. Like, I saw a mouse one time he caught and put it in a Ralph's bag on the handle of the door. I was like, what the hell is this mouse doing? I've seen it in traps. Like, we, I see mice. It's not a big deal. I don't think it's like whatever, but it scared me so much because I thought it was a big mouse, like a big rat. Because no one said there was a dog. Most dog people let you know, hey, there's dogs in the house. No one told me. It was also like late at night and it was dark and we never leave our house past dark time. And I was like, ah, I didn't know if it was a coyote coming through. I didn't know what was happening. It was so funny because I saw it coming and I knew that the minute it's going to get into your eyesight, you're going to jump. Why didn't you protect me? This is what I said. You are the one I that needs to jump. It was, you are the was Kevin Costner to my Whitney Houston. Yeah, but there was no danger but you knew there. what was going to happen. You knew There's I was going to freak puppy. out. You should have jumped no, that, on me or something. I knew that would be funny. There was no danger. <laughs> no, there was danger. Dogs, dogs do scare me. I've always been scared of dogs. It scared me so much. That was that was a wild podcast. They're they're so much fun. I love both of them. Oh yes, my God. it was I, it was crazy. Oh my god, what a! I literally because <laughs> I was watching it. Me and my boyfriend were watching. It, like, I love in that you bed. watch my videos. By the way, you see me all the time, and no, you still I watch do. my videos. It's Thank like, you. It's amazing. We were watching it. And <laughs> he was like half paying attention, and then that part happened, and then, and I literally, <laughs> th- I not even kidding was laughing so oh hard God. i rolled i fell out of bed and i was like crawling because i couldn't breathe it was like so visceral what? it was the funniest thing i think i've seen in my whole uh, life i love it moments was like that crazy i do love when they happen because like you know in the moment i had to go to the bathroom so bad that whole podcast so i was like thinking it was like not a good podcast on my end and i was just like oh man i should have gone to the bathroom or whatever but i don't like going to the bathroom in other people's houses but then that happened and i was like oh that's cute i love when there's clippable moments oh my it's god it's cute just naturally not trying i hate when people like try to make a clippable yeah moment. like try, try to produce that was like the most it, genuine like. well being in a different environment too is like crazy to me like i don't leave my house so like being in a different environment and it's very much sorority vibe sorority house like you know and it's, it's fun like I said all her friends are actually like so mature and so sweet like it's it's crazy I'm so much older but um it, you're always a little off guard so like when that happened I was just like oh my god like you know yeah also being on someone else's podcast is a lot of pressure because you're like oh man I gotta be funny I gotta make sure this is a good one and <laughs> it's just a lot and also just in general like talking to multiple people like there's their friends their friends are coming in like there's two hosts I always say this it's I'm bad there's another podcast I did called Trash Tuesday a while ago as three co-hosts or three hosts it's so hard uh, the Julia Fox one too. Nikki and Julie were on either side and just talked to two people. Like, yeah. It's so hard. And then you also wonder like, okay, like, I don't know. And then usually they have like their inside jokes, you know? So I get really stressed when there's more than like one host, one person. Like I really want to bring on these twins on the show. Not Sugar and Spice, different show. I mean, I'd love to bring them on. But even Sugar and Spice, it's so hard for me to talk to like two people at once. Yeah. I don't know. And you don't it's, want one to feel like you're not paying attention. Yeah. That, and then they have their own little inside things. So you're just like feel awkward. You're like, sorry, I'm here. Like it's very, it's very that. I mean, I love their vibe. I really do. That's why when we do guests, by the way, because we're like, I miss us here. It's just hard for me to like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Moses is my husband. So it's like, fine. Like if he's not <clears throat> chiming in and he doesn't care, but you also, you have to be considerate. Like, okay, well, like okay, do you chime in? You, are you saying enough? Whatever. So I just like watching that personally. I like watching that too. But I love that podcast. I love the cancel podcast. They're kill- they're crushing it. So obviously they know what they're doing. But with that situation, I feel like when there's just two people, like you know, you could just have conversations the whole time. You never need a guest, really. But yeah, I get it. <laughs> Spice it up. I was honored. I was super honored to be it. And I would love Brooke on mine too for sure. But to like together, it's just hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, even when they were here, like the energy was like <laughs> the energy is cool, like off the charts. I'm like, I don't. It's like I was shaking after. <laughs> I was so I was tired. shaking. I was like in bed shaking. I was like, what do you want to eat? And we've been eating. We were eating takeout. Again, amazing. Couldn't we eat pasta with bolognese? So he was just so great. But I was like, I was like shaking. I like couldn't like move out of my bed. It was very weird. And it was great. Like you said, it was great. But there is so much energy and so much good energy. And everyone's yeah. excited. And I'm excited. I was just like dying afterwards. And so then when I went the next night, I was must have been on adrenaline because I was like, all right, here we go. Round two. <laughs> She's great. She's and she's Tana really is the ultimate podcast guest. She gets yeah. everyone just a million views. She's she's just entertaining and she just says whatever. And oh, to be twenty five again, I love being twenty five and saying whatever. I wish I had the tact um, in class Tana has because I was a little more messy. <laughs> I also have a mental illness. Everyone really wants you and her to do like another podcast. So uh, I wish it'd be. Like- <laughs> but I feel like everyone's doing a podcast. Jeff was supposed to do a podcast with her. Oh, yeah. She's just. I think she's just so. <laughs> she's I mean, so in demand. She yeah. She is. She went from my podcast to Whitney Cummings that same night. Crazy. Me and Whitney dropped podcast same day with Tana. I was like okay. <laughs> It was, she's, she's amazing. And then she went to like a Zach Bryan concert. Yeah. I'm like, girl, I love it. Booked and busy. I would love to. I, I love doing podcasts. They're so much fun. And yeah, I would do it with anybody, clearly. <laughs> Not you. Know, that was a shade at someone else. <laughs> <I know. laughs> that was 
the shade at someone else. Um, it wasn't shade, was it? I don't know. I would do one with Moses. No. I don't like couples podcasts, but I would do one with you. Honestly, if this didn't work out, I was going to do one with Moses. I'm like, God, I think you're my only hope at this point. We're just too, um, we just, you just, we just agree on too many things. Yeah, we kind of agree on most things. Except pasta. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like my pasta eating habits um but yeah david i don't think he's gonna get a reality show i honestly think he's and i can say this too maybe because i'm also a liability too much of a liability i think he's just like again i don't think he's canceled i think he should just be like banished from like the world you know what i mean like there are certain people that like okay get canceled for making a bad joke or something but he's like he literally almost like took someone's life a couple times yeah. oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not allegedly. Like, it, it was on camera. And I'm just like, how is this just... Because also, here's another thing. Okay, yes, accidents so happen. And, like, uh, I think if he was just like, yeah, it was a really bad accident. Like, that sucked. Like, I'm not never vlogging again. And he did stop. It's like, own up to it. Pay for your friend when you're literally so rich. Like, what? What? I don't know. Unless it's admitting guilt. I have no idea. I don't know. That whole situation, when people don't take accountability at all, like, I don't, I don't like it. Like, even if you're... You know, even if you're, like, not in the wrong, like, take some accountability. You hurt someone's feelings. You did something. You literally almost took someone's life. Like, you took someone's eye. And then just see the person just thriving that did it. And really yeah. taking, you know, and really, and he blamed Jeff. On, I mean, we go back to it, back and forth. But he literally blamed Jeff. He, like, doubled down and was like, well, Jeff, like, wanted to do it. And I'm like, Bleh. I hate it so much. Like, there's certain people that are canceled and it's whatever. And, like, you don't like him or whatever. But then there's certain people that should just be banished. And I don't say that about many people, but I think he's one of those people. <laughs> Are you going to invite Jeff on the podcast? Oh, God. Well, straight man energy. I don't know if I can take <laughs> fully. Like I said, unless you're Dr. Drew, this licensed therapist who's literally paid to, like, listen to you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if the vibe would be there. I have, like, I'm so curious and I have, like, so many questions, like, you know, just in general. But I imagine, um, like, Jeff there and then Tana in this seat over here being, like, the, the media. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I kind of love it, though. She is kind of, like, the ultimate hype. Um, Yeah. He'd have to come here. I don't think do his podcast no, i would I think, be like going into like the lion's den yeah, of straight men i think yeah he would have to come here podcast swaps are an interesting thing though like it's very interesting i mean i literally only did the one with tana but i don't think i could do it with anyone else like i want people to come on my podcast i don't want to, i've been so many people so many spotify podcasts by the way everyone's like i'm like where is it they're like downtown spotify and i was like why do they i uh, know i'm not doing spotify podcasts because they didn't want my podcast okay spotify i'm over you unless you want to give me 60 million dollars for this podcast in and which then we'll case talk. and then we'll talk <laughs> yeah david the real what, what would the reality show entail was he like selling sunset and, like yeah, selling dobrik that's exactly what he wanted it to be no. was, like sell, yeah i'm surprised he said that no really <laughs> about like the employees at dobrik's but just funny are they like hot i don't know i don't, I don't know. know i like i said i went that one time and it was just like i mean it's a tiny little thing like there was like one person at the register, then one person or two, maybe two cooking the pizzas, but it was really tiny. And they were out of breadsticks. They're always out of something there. Really? So sus. Yeah. Um, Dave Portnoy was kicked off the sidewalk <laughs> for eating pizza. <laughs> He's wild. I don't know. I don't really have feelings about this either way. I just kept seeing it all over my for you page. Me just too. Eating pizza. Did you saw it? Yeah. Okay, we're on the same TikTok was, them. Well, I was like researching because I was I kind of tried to look up like like the buzzy topics and i get a lot of it's like a website that's a lot of straight male like people oh my God, what do you want what's it called straight male news it's called Dixerto or something what yeah it has a lot of like tiktok tiktoker Dixerto. news and it's like 80 percent like straight guys straight guy TikTok. so they're talking news, about Dave porn name yeah didn't he get like confront when he got confronted for the he like review? got pizza and then the pizza order came out and just started like yelling at him like randomly like don't go on my he's like enjoy your pizza like any other customer but don't get on my sidewalk and then Dave porn like who are you they just started like yelling at him. it was very weird and then there was like five have... different angles like people filming this i'm like <laughs> this is so bizarre i don't get Dave porn but apparently he's not for me to get but he's like re reviews pizza but i'm like i'd never heard of this and he left like a bad review and that's why the person why don't we like, even have the pizza yet oh but maybe what we were thinking is maybe the guy knew his pizza was bad and so he was just like no he's gonna get this <laughs> bad review so he came out and was like i don't know that's the only thing i could think of but um i love his girlfriend that's all i don't know anything <laughs> else all. about him her name's Sylves on tiktok and i follow her all the time and i'd have her on but she's always like in the hamptons or wherever they live nantucket and just living her bougie life and i'm like gosh goals so I know we've been talking a lot about like, you know, where Gabby Hanna is and hopefully yes. she's okay. And so Spill Sash. Uh, Spill Sash gets so many views and doesn't even show her face. I'm like, that's what, there's no like, production value. <laughs> she's like, but her editing is like really good though. I will oh, say. Like, I don't know. She, I, to me, I look at everything looks the same. <laughs> 
<laughs> like even your work, I know you do good, but I'm always like, I don't know. But also, I don't know editing. I literally yeah. don't know. So. I guess if you actually like, once you like know like how each little cut takes forever, like you kind of know. I guess. Did she get uh, nominated for a streamy? For she editing? should. I honestly Spell think she fash. should. Who she's is it? Really do you know? Good. No, but she seems really. I want to know her identity so I bad. Know. She's nice. She's pretty nice to me for most of the part. So I'm like, I kind of want to know who it she's, is. She, everything I've seen, she's very like fair. I think. Like, yeah. Yeah, which I really appreciate, and um, and she does like really good research. Right. Um, and she's the only one talking about this. I saw the Gabby Hanna update. We talked about it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we got an update. She's resurfaced. I know. I was she's shocked. Like on a podcast. She was on the like sauna podcast. I want to be on that podcast. Their feet were like so cute. Yeah. Do you know who it is? You know what that no, podcast name is? I was is? like trying to look. Um, I was like looking into him to see like I'm like, how did he even like get Gabby? Like seeing the connection. But it's just this like uh, he does all his podcasts. He does like self care. It's like sauna, spa. It's okay, all, it's like sauna like talk. So they like part is that of what it's called? Yeah. Okay, love that. Um, so like they'll film the podcast in the sauna. It's so crazy. Uh, I love it. Uh, I love it. So maybe they're just like friends who I like. Yes, but it's so weird because he's not like a super like big like it only gets a few hundred views and stuff. Maybe better bigger a few on audio. Hundred, really? Yeah. Oh, it looks like good production quality. I know. So maybe mm, it like does. I don't know if the audio. I don't know. But it's even audio. like he's not active on like Instagram or Twitter even anymore either. So I'm like, how did they like cross paths? It's Interesting. So weird. Maybe just like a fan. Yeah. Like she was maybe a fan of him. Yeah, like, maybe I, you know. she. Yeah, that yeah. could honestly be it. But she was on this podcast in June, and it's just so small. Like it's just no one knew really knew about right. it but um spill shots from this video and um covered it and talk because a lot of people have been wondering like, where yeah Gabby is. same i was like where is she yeah. I, yeah, she never pops up on anything like tiktok twitter no or nothing like that. and she i don't think she's posted all maybe like in the beginning of the year i think it's been like seven or so months since she's posted anything she kind of just been like off yeah line. i watched just the clips from spill sash i didn't I didn't find the actual podcast, and she just said she's just like this is really her year of rest i'm honestly very happy that Gabby's doing well, honestly. No matter Same. how you find, like, you know, your piece or whatever, like, if you mm. find it, I think that's great. She's, like, very religious now. Um, She talks about how, like, she, like, God really has given her, like, a purpose. Religious or spiritual? I think it's specifically about God. So I think okay. it's, like, so, more religious. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And how, like, that's the first thing in the morning that she does is, like, thank God for being alive. And when she goes to bed, she's like, you know, okay, God, I'll see you tomorrow. Like, that's always, like, her Love first that. thought beginning and end of the day. Okay. Um, despite it's weird because I had like a little bit of drama with Gabby. I know obviously you have too. What's the word she called you? Oh, sinister. Sinister. <laughs> yeah. I see it. Yeah. I feel it. Get you on that demon time with Doja and Beyonce. Does, yeah, that's my demon era. <laughs> but despite everything, I don't know. It was just nice to see her be like at peace and like just chill. Yeah. Not talking about drama and not here. I'm back to drama talking, but yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I think. I'm just, I'm relieved, especially because the last time we really saw her active was like the TikTok situation when she was like posting like crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's when I was like, and this is why I have a soft spot Gabby because it's like, that's when I was like concerned because I know that type where it's like, yes, maybe you're more in control than people think. Maybe you're not, but also maybe you're just like, you're getting off in the spiraling and maybe you're actually spiraling, but you're like, oh, I'm profiting, but I'm in control of this. Like you think you're in control, but you're not. Like I know how that feels because like I, that, that was me for so many years. So I feel like that's why maybe we've always butted heads through like we're very similar, but like also see very, things very differently. So uh, yeah, I always had a soft spot for her too. And when that happened, I was like, dang, like, I, I get it. I get it on both points. She's, like, getting a lot of views and probably a lot of money. So, like, I we're similar in that sense. And she's talked about it, too, where it's, like, you know, that's validating. But on the other hand, she might actually be spiraling. There might actually be something wrong. And no one's there for her. She's letting random people in. You know, she just had a breakup, all this stuff like that, where I was just like, damn, I'm, like, really scared. And then for her to disappear, it's like if I were to disappear, right? Like, if I just stopped posting for seven months, people would be like, what the fuck happened, yeah. you know? Because you post... Not only are you posting consistently, you're posting more than anyone else on the app. <laughs> you're posting 100 TikToks a day, you know? And so I always think like. Yeah, what happened? And like, she seemed she seemed to like it. Maybe not towards the end. She seemed to like, you know, making content and stuff like that. So you always wonder what happened. So yeah, to see her on the podcast, she she looked really great. She seemed great. I think when you find God or any sort of spirituality, like it helps ground you in some sense. And whether or not you believe in God or think it's real, like at least it grounds people. So when people get so mad at people for believing in God or heaven, I'm like, sometimes you just need something to get you through life. You know, yeah. even if it's not real at the end. To get you through this world, like, you need to believe that. Some people need to believe that. I need to believe it. I'm like, okay, something, there's a greater being than this life, you know? Yeah. I think it really seems to have given her, like, a, given her a purpose, which I think is great. And I think it's, like, as long as any religion or anything that you believe in isn't, like, actively harming anyone else, right. I think then more power to you, you know? Totally, so, yeah. I don't know. I was very, like... I was genuinely like really happy for her yeah, watching that's it. That's good. Yeah. Me and too. And I love that Spill Shots covered it because I'm like, I, there's people who genuinely like like her. And even if you don't like her, you, she's just been around for so long. You're just like, oh, I hope she's like okay. Yeah. As long as you just hope that she's like well, at least, especially like knowing 
how things were the last time that you really saw her. Yeah. You know? And being able to just like rest is like good, you know, like taking a year off. Yeah. Or it's actually, especially that's all very healthy too. Cause it's like in the content creation thing, I feel like there's such like a, this like need to, I feel like you have to keep going, keep reinventing mm-hmm. bigger and bigger, bigger and better content, you right. know? And like, no, I think that's really great. I know. I always wonder that too. I'm always like, like I said, when I win the lottery, like I'm always just like, <laughs> am I going to just take off? I don't think I would. Like, even if I'm living my most fabulous life, traveling to Italy and Paris and all these luxury things, like I still would want to like vlog. Or, I don't know. Like, I, you know what I mean? I don't know. Anytime I think about taking a break or want to take a break, I like, I'm like, okay, when I, you know, when I gave birth, I'm like, I want to just take a couple weeks off, but I don't know. Like I want to check in. I don't yeah. know. There is like, I don't know if that is an addiction. I don't know what that is, but um but i get it like um, i think it's good honestly i don't know what i would do i always think that with people when they just stop posting content like probably it is for the better like for their mental health and everything maybe they're just like living their best life but i'm like what do you do like yeah. i would not know what to, like jenna marble is like what is i would love her on the back oh what is she God, doing that's a that is such a good question i guess she's just because julian is still doing content. oh is he yeah he still does like youtube and twitch so he's still like oh does he talk about it no i don't think so crazy yeah, so i think she's just like living her life i guess but yeah i guess me too i get kind of bored when i'm not like working really which is, could be unhealthy but i don't right. know i feel like i have to do something do sometimes. something yeah yeah i guess it's finding that balance like yeah. we have a good balance though. like i do work a lot but then i feel like i take a lot of time off too i feel like i'm a lot of times we're just like chilling and swimming in the pool but then those moments are like oh, i guess it's like where you find the balance get that yeah. back on how do we balance this <laughs> we because when that. i am in the pool sometimes i'm like oh my god i should, I should be, be doing, making yeah. content or something but um yeah i don't know balance at night we just shut off we shut off the phones six o'clock we just you know make lasagna watch home improvement i don't know but um yeah good good i'm glad yeah soft spot for gabby and I, 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 thought, I thought she was talented i thought she had good music i thought she was you know talented. remember that one dope thing where she's like gotta gotta out of body rock a body done you remember that little soft wait no <laughs> it was like a roast of herself but then she went to this whole like lynn manuel thing and it was she's like in a white room and then she's like i gotta rock without a body got another body you know? no. it's kind of a smash like i think the fine brothers did a reaction to it. like she was good she was like talented and like i think she's very captivating too the fact that she can course. be gone people are still like one day you know no anyone who can be polarizing or like you said captivate an audience for just being themselves like is is pretty cool it's yeah. a talent unto itself much like me um and finally eight passengers Ooh. we have eight minutes to talk about eight passengers <laughs> uh this is it. This is it on so many levels. I actually like hate this one. And this is like a dark topic too. I don't like this darkness. I feel like we have light literally, but I feel like the darkness is coming in. This eight passengers, Ruby Frankie, Ruby Frank. Yeah. Soup was the first one on this. Soup had a video from like eight months ago about mm-hmm. this lady. I only saw one video. We saw one video of her on TikTok and it was the one where her daughter forgot to pack her lunch. Yeah. And she was like, and she like was vlogging about this, like loading thing. This is the best parenting move. She goes, I told the teacher, like, I'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable, but I'm not bringing her food. And I'm just like, so I didn't know anything about this person. I thought it was like a one-off video and this person like disappeared or something like that. But she like did not bring her daughter lunch because she forgot to pack her, her six-year-old daughter. And I was like, you're literally the mom. That's literally a child. Of course, they're going to forget to pack their lunch. You're going to forget a lot of things because they're a child. So I guess she like starves her children. So she got arrested. Two, account, two counts of child. abuse, aggravated abuse, aggravated yeah. or something. And she got arrested. And who was the woman that got arrested with her? So it's her business, kind of like business partner. What business do they have? So they have this like platform or channel called or channel called Connections, and it's kind of like allegedly culty. People pay these like crazy like um, up to like five thousand dollars, I think, to have like it's like coaching, this like life coaching. Five thousand per person. Uh, yeah, for like the month. Oh, God, yeah, I'm get into that. So they you can pay like Connections. five thousand dollars to get this like spiritless um, coaching. So yeah, that was the other lady that was also. Um, arrested with What'd her. she get arrested for? Same thing. Like, I think the two acts of child endangerment or neglect but or whatever. with this lady's child, they weren't her children. The Frankie children, yeah. But why did she get arrested? I don't get why the, the other I woman... I think they were at her... I'm not 100% sure what... It was like she was either aware of it or it was at her property, something like that. What about the dad? So the dad... Um, and had separated a while ago from her. Oh. Um, I mean, they're very, I think they're Mormon and they're involved with like the Church of Latter-day Saints. So it's like the separation mm. divorce is like very, a no-no. So they haven't like ever said they were, but mm. they live separate, like um, separate lives. They don't have their wedding rings on or anything. And one of the older kids lives with him chad lives with the dad yeah he got a lot of like the abuse on camera too like literally yeah. do you see the one with the homework i mean the dad was part of that though where they had the homework in the bag and like you have to do you have to pay the money or do chores equivalent to get your homework back i was like what like this kid's gonna like fail school because you're not giving him his homework mm-hmm. like 
I mean, that's crazy. One that is allowed on the platform YouTube, but like, how did no one step in before, like any of this stuff? I think they were on for like seven years or something. So how were they posting for so long? How do they have 2 million subscribers? Oh, I just, it's, it's like it's evil aggravating. vibe. Like it's, you said, it's, it's like evil. evil. It's evil. I got like that too. I just saw the clip resurface of Nikki Philippi. Do you remember her? Yeah. And Dan Philippi. And they were talking about, they were going to adopt from like, I think it was Thailand. Was it Thailand? And then they were literally like, oh my God, they like, we we're going to go pick up the child and everything like that. But they're not going to like let us film him for a year. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm a vlogger. I was like, what is wrong yeah. with people? Like the fact that not only did they think that sounded like a rational thing, like to adopt a kid and like, oh, uh, whatever, but to like say it and like talk about it. I'm like, how? How are these people not like a danger to themselves or society? Like, how are they not being like locked up? Yeah, like that's crazy. You're gonna you're running through this whole adoption process, and then you just decided, no, actually, I'm not gonna adopt this kid because we can't film him. Yeah. It's really sick, and I, that's why it's like I get the concern with like family vloggers and stuff. I think it's different, yeah. right? Because there's people who like post their kids, like, and like it's just like a part of their lives. But I think it's different when you your whole like bread and butter is the kid. Like you no, rely on the kids. That's disgusting. For everything. Yeah. I didn't know the connotation because, like, honestly, we changed our name to Family Channel because I thought it was, like, a cute thing, right? Like, a Family Channel is cute. I didn't realize, like, the darkness of Family Channel. Same, yeah. As far as, like, what it means to be a Family Channel. And I was just like, okay, I'm, like, switching it back. Honestly, I haven't even posted there. It's cute to post, like, little things here and there or whatever. But I'm just like, oh, like, the disgusting things these, like, vloggers do, these, like, family vloggers. I was like, oh, yeah, they're literally having kids to monetize, to profit off of. And I'm like, okay, that is, like, so, so disgusting. Yeah. And it does take away. It does. It is annoying because it's kind of like, oh, like, the people who do post, then you're just like with this group of people that like you know they're filming their kids doing gymnastics class i'm like first of all there's other kids in the background they're in you know just all this stuff i mean how is that how are I don't get it. But it's like this lady is so insane. So she was like starving because the kids like ran out of the house and then went next door to get asked for food and water. Yeah. So she was using all kind of crazy forms of punishment, but yeah, holding out food. Um, so one of the uh, daughters escaped and was able to ask for help. And she had like open wounds. She was malnourished. <sighs> she had like marks of like being duct taped. So like just very much like abused. Once the cops were called, then they also found another uh, child that was I was like a different property too that was had the same um mm. the same signs of abuse like malnourished open wounds the tape and then in the investigation they found like the the tools that were like used to make those marks they haven't said like what it was specifically oh my yet God. yeah so all the kids have been the younger kids have all been um taking uh, put into different custody i think either a different family member or somewhere else but the older kids are like the one like did the story was like finally like you know yeah, getting arrested once which they is hit like crazy. 18 they were able to like be free oh so, so some of them are over 18 now one, there's the oldest daughter she's the one that posted like um the update about her family but she has been like talking like she's been anti like the connections like that whole culty thing she's been speaking mm. out about that before and then the son the older son chad was with the father does like, the dad say anything because he's also part of these blogs I like know. you he know hasn't what i mean said anything and he hasn't been like arrested or charged i'm sure there's like an investigation going into him but so far it's just the mom like, and then the that's literally partner. like child abuse on camera and like no one did anything or say anything for so long too well there was a moment where um people called in to have cps come but they didn't have enough evidence to do anything so like, she must be thinking she's like being a good parent like she's showing this is a good parenting style like she must think in her head like because i was thinking that too i was like why would someone do this like why are you starving your children why would, why don't you like give them up for adoption or something like, why is it like she takes pleasure in abusing them or is she thinking like this is a good parenting technique like they're gonna have strict values like they're gonna like what well, i don't understand, I don't understand either. well she i honestly think that there's some i don't know there's some kind of like brainwashy brain kind of thing to think cult. that that's like the right thing to do uh, it's just crazy that this ha she had the channel for so long and it took like up to 2021 to like finally when the kids are adults like half yeah. the kids are adults yeah it's oh. it's so weird and you're right it's like it makes it it lumps everyone in like if you have like a family channel even if it's like you know wholesome of course or just anything you're, your kids you're like oh my god you're, you're using them for that yeah i was like, like oh my god you're using it for profit i was like oh my god so weird and but i get it because these people are so like honestly the family vlogger thing when you have your kids and like all these things it's like you're psycho and it's not just like in passing like oh like we're having lunch or something it's just like literally making them like the star of the videos and and the thumbnails it reminds and me of like weirdly like joey's like videos with the puppies like because you have to like do extreme <laughs> things with like the dogs to like you know have the title of the thumbnail or whatever right, right but then when you do that with like a human being it's like <laughs> yeah. so it's like very sick and like very dystopian because oh you're also like she would kind of like you said like we were having like the clips right like yeah. producing the moment so you'd have to like do whatever with the kids to like have that clickbait and that title and it's just if you're gonna like sit down and like have punish your kids on camera if you're gonna like 
their first time shaving on camera, like all this stuff, uh, like making uh, content out of it. Uh, it, it creeps me out to no uh, end. And anyone who watches it, I'm sorry, but that is like, if you're watching people punish their, like on that level, right. it's like, don't support that. Content. No, it's so weird. Oh my God. So she's going to go to prison or what happens? Like you get arrested and then what? And then you're like released and then you have to wait your trial date yeah, or something. Yeah, that whole, I'm so, so you get arrested and then you have to get bailed out. Yeah. You have to and meet then you can kind of chill for a while and then you go get your, yeah, then you go on trial and then all that stuff. It's literally so heartbreaking. Like, it's it's crazy. That's what we're talking about. Like, you know, that's what jades these kids. Because, you know, like I was talking about how your babies are just so full of love. They love everybody. They don't see judgment. And then, like, stuff like this happens. And then you start feeling paranoid or judgy of the world because of the stuff that happened to you. And it just sucks. Yeah. It's crazy how these people can just, like, anyone can have a baby. It's like some people really just shouldn't. No, especially, I don't know. I don't, I don't like, she made millions off of her kids. Like, uh, there are people, brand deals for this con. That, I don't get it. I don't understand how all this happened yeah you know? right when she's doing this stuff it's like there's no there's no punishment strong enough for this crime of like child abuse like honestly that's when you just are like in prison like let them deal with it you know because yeah. i know prisoner is like they don't take no shit for like if you mess with children mm-hmm. like abuse them in any way like especially like starving them and stuff and it's like she looks i mean I, again she's obviously not normal but she looks like just a normal person like i was just like what this lady like you know that's why you shouldn't judge the look so she is psychotic she has crazy eyes her eyes are crazy eyes they're so scary i'm just like eee! she scares me that's like the devil that's like ugh, God, too many devil things let's sage it <laughs> gabby hannah we need the the god i don't know about the universe that god yeah. cleanse this room with sage and love and peace i'm just like i need to stop this camera <laughs> This was a great episode, you guys. <laughs> if I do say so myself. No sponsor this week, but we will have sponsors soon. Thank you guys for the love and support. As always, thank you for everything. Good vibes only today. We are sending you so many good vibes and spiritual blessings and love. And just uh, just be yourself and be kind. And that's it. It's just Trish. <laughs>